Tommy Smith out of the lineup. That means the Huskies have had to make a change as well with their receiving unit. So when Jason Hansen puts it on the tee, he's going to be kicking to number eight, Mark Jones, a sophomore from Vista, California, who has not returned to football this year, though he has been in the deep man situation at times. And also, Walter Bailey, wearing number 23, will stand next to him, the sophomore from Portland, by way of Western Washington University. He has not received a kick this year as well. Well, Keith, over half of Jason Hansen kickoffs, 32 of 58, have not been returned. They've been in or out of the end zone. Again, this is one of the things the Cougars must do, is not allow the Husky special teams to get a big return. And starts right here with the kickoff. Washington will begin first and ten from its own 20-yard line. Mark Brunel will try to work his magic against the Washington State Cougar defense today. Well, Brunel has only completed 46% of his passes, but a lot of them have been big plays. 14.5 per completion. He's thrown for nine touchdowns. He's caught one. Run, thrown for 11, excuse me. He's run for nine. formation, Darius Turner, Dean O'Brien, that's McKay to the backfield. And they'll pass incomplete, intended for McKay, who was looking the other way. The offensive line for Washington, 6'4", 279 pounds. Malamala is making his first start since the Oregon game today. Huskies have only allowed 10 sacks this year, and they're the leading rushing team in the Pacific 10 Conference. Backs and receivers. Dino Bryant, his first start. Mario Bailey, the premier big play receiver in the Pac-10. Second and 10 for the 20. It's Turner. Chris Moton made the tackle. Darius Turner out to the 28-yard line. Defensive line for Washington State, 6'5", 262. They are 10th in total defense. This front group is 12 sacks. Deron Woodley has not had one this year. Linebackers McClanahan and Lurcher are backups at the beginning of the year. They've been pressed into duty because of injuries. Secondary, ninth in the Pac-10 in pass defense. Moton has moved to strong safety. It's a question of whether he has the speed to stay with the Husky receivers in passing situations. Broken play, but Brunel may have spurted forward for the first down. It looks as if he may be a bit shy. Rod Plummer made the stop after the quick snap by center Ed Cunningham. Well, that play there, they, the offensive line does not go down in, into a stance, and they try to catch the defensive line unawares. It's a fourth down. First big decision for Don James. Maybe a snap before the snap count. The Huskies are shy of the first down, and Channing Wiles will come on to kick. And do you think that helps the Cougars? Don James hates mistakes. And that one will annoy him for a while. The Huskies have an over overwhelming edge in the first quarter against their opponents, and that's got to be a big lift for the Cougars to hold them first time out. Wiles averaging 40 yards a kick, and he gets off a beauty. Philip Bobo back to his own 15-yard line. And the Cougars will begin at their own 25. After a 10-yard return by Philip Bobo, Mark Kilpack made the tackle for the University of Washington. Here's quarterback Drew Bledsoe. If he had played in enough games so far, he'd be second in the Pac-10 in passing efficiency. He's a big play player himself. 15 yards of completion, nine touchdowns. He's only thrown one interception. Not bad for a true freshman. And so we'll see what Washington State does with its first possession today. Paul Carr in motion. Swinton starting at running back. And this is Swinton. Out to the 28-yard line. Brought down by Brett Collins of Washington. 
The offensive line for the Cougars, 6'4", 270. They've had a couple injury problems. Norvell is suffering a little bit at center. This group has given up 40 sacks, ninth in the Pac-10. Total offense, seventh, their last in possession time. The wide receivers, Philip Bobo is the favorite receiver for Drew Bledsoe. Six touchdowns so far. Philip you know, Bobo said earlier this week that uh, he likes playing catch with Drew Bledsoe. He's found that since he came into the lineup, he's getting the ball a lot more. Chico Fraley in on the stop. Rich Swinton, the ball carrier for Washington State, out to the 32-yard line for a gain of four. Here's the Husky defense. Front three has 15 sacks. Antlin and Richardson are second and third, respectively, in the Pac-10. They have 6'3", 260 pounds. Linebackers are really active. Try to guess today when they're blitzing and when they're not. Quarterbacks around the league can't figure it out. The secondary, the top pass defense in the Pac-10. Pacoa replaces Tommy Smith today at free safety. He's an outstanding player. Shotgun for Washington State. Bledsoe. And we've got some movement and penalty flags go down. UCLA used the shotgun effectively against Washington a week ago, and we see it for the first time from Washington State today. Well, Washington State used it a little bit against Arizona State. It did look like it gave Bledsoe a little bit more protection, but the problem comes there is that the... The problem there is that UCLA has a pretty good running attack out of their shotgun, and the Cougars really don't. Jim Fogeltantz, our referee today. Illegal procedure against Washington State. Michael Bailey was jumping. And there's one of the problems with the shotgun. Even at home, it's hard to hear that snap count. Third and eight now. They back it up to the 27 of Washington State. They get Donald Jones sealed off. Incomplete. Eric Frisco providing coverage on Philip Bobo. So it'll be fourth down for Washington State, a fourth and eight situation. And we'll see Jason Hansen punting for the first time today. You look out here, they're going to double team the contain man for the Huskies and give Bledsoe a little extra room to get outside. And this is a beauty as well. Walter Bailey, a reverse. Pete O'Brien with the football. Out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Brent Carolyn made the tackle for Washington State. And we'll be back to Martin Stadium in just a moment. There's Cougar head coach Mike Price, 11-18 to play, first quarter, Washington State and Washington unable to put points up after their first possessions. The Huskies ran a play while we were away and gained two yards out to the 36-yard line, so it's a second and eight situation as we look at the football right now. Brunel with pressure. He'll run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Kurt Newton escorted him, and Lee Tillman was the man applying pressure in the Washington backfield. Well, one of the things the Cougar defense is going to have to do is contain Brunel. He's more dangerous. He's a lot like Elway. He's a lot more dangerous on the run than he is standing there in the pocket, and he has a propensity to go to his left when he's in trouble. Contain on the right side of the Cougar defense didn't do the job that time, Keith. situation now, ball at the 40-yard line. Lost his footing for a moment, incomplete. The intended receiver was Pete O'Brien. You can see Mark Brunel kind of lose footing with that left foot as he tried to plant. He'll, he'll come to the sideline, and on fourth down, the uh, Huskies will be forced to kick it away. You see Brunel looking to his outside here, and the Cougars end up trying to give the little extra help to Moton. You see the free safety come over there. John Diggs. Bobo standing back at his own 20. 
Channing Wiles punting well today. This one back to the 10. Bobo wrapped up and dropped immediately by that Husky special team. And Washington State will take over first and 10 about its own 11-yard line. Matt Jones down to make the tackle for the University of Washington. Here's Mike Price, who's been feeling a lot of heat lately here in the Palouse. His team was 6-1 and one a year ago. Since that point, they have lost 11 of their past 14 games. A 54-yard punt by Channing Wiles and a 5-yard return. Cougars will begin at their own 12. Play action. Incomplete. Bobo, the intended receiver. Again, a lot of pressure in the backfield. Travis Hansen was in Bledsoe's face when he got the ball off. If you watch Richardson here get free, he puts a quite a blow on the young freshman. Bledsoe can whistle it in there. He's not going to take his eye off. Coach Price has said he wanted him to throw to those guys that were closer coverage. You don't want to get any closer than that. It's a bad place for an interception, Keith. Haven't had a complete pass in the game. Brunel and Bledsoe combined over four. Second down. Down goes Bledsoe. Chico Fraley, Donald Jones. They were all there for Washington. Eric Briscoe as well. Mike Price had said last week after the ASU game that Bledsoe was going to have to learn how to throw the ball. He's got to throw the ball a little bit quicker. He's waiting too long. You can watch him back in here. He's just looking downfield as if he's mesmerized. Somehow, if everyone's uh, covered, you're going to have to take off or get rid of the football. It's a field position mistake for the Cougars. It'll be a third and 18 situation. Eric Briscoe, the first there. That's his sixth tackle for loss this year. That could go as a sack as well. Briscoe has been a fine secondary player for the Huskies. He has six interceptions this year. Well, the Huskies are getting pretty good pressure without having to resort to a blitz, Keith. And I think that's one of the advantages that they, they have up front. They're big and they're strong, and their front three or four are going to be able to get very adequate pressure without resorting to the blitz, and that's something that the uh, Cougars cannot say for their own defense. Nine and a half minutes to play. First quarter, no score. Swinton out of the end zone. Out to about the three-yard line. Perhaps the four. Brett Collins, Donald Jones from the outside to make the stop along with Travis Hansen. And Jason Hansen will stand at the back of the end zone to punt it away. To be his third punt of the afternoon. Here come the Huskies. Bino Bryant, it's a short kick, bounces at the 35, and that's where it will roll out of bounds, and the Huskies will have excellent field position when we return to Martin Stadium in Pullman. No score, and you're watching Apple Cup 90. This is nuts. How come I know so much? Oh, my God. Bryant carries for the University of Washington down to the 27-yard line. A gain of eight yards on a first down play, and Washington will have it second and three from the Cougar 27. An outstanding field position to start their third drive of the day after the short 31-yard punt from Jason Hansen out of his own end zone. Bryant once again. Near the 20-yard line, a penalty flag is down. Kurt Newton made the tackle along with Jerron Woodley. Looks like it might be a hold, Keith. On both those last plays, the Cougars were in excellent position to defend it, but linebackers missed the, missed the tackle. McClanahan the first time, Lurcher the second time. Fino Bryant playing in place of Greg Lewis. Mark Brunell said that Greg Lewis is the key part of the Husky offense, and he will be missed today. 
Lewis rushed for over 100 yards in nine of the 10 games he played in this year, has 14 100-yard games during his career, which is a school record. Here's Jim Fogelpens. Holding against Washington, which will back it up to the 32-yard line. Bryant averages five and a half yards a carry. Greg Lewis was averaging 5.6 yards a carry when he was injured last week. A second and eight situation now after the 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Matt Jones on the draw. Down to the 28-yard line. Matt Jones, the redshirt freshman from Portland Central Catholic High School. John Diggs and Ron Ricard made the tackle. Here's a draw play. The Cougars playing, uh, getting upfield a little bit too much. The linebacker's not getting off blocks. Husky offensive line does a great job in blocking the run. Ball is at the 24-yard line. A first down for the Huskies. Jones near the 20. Jerron Woodley made the tackle. Next on the West, why is the government spending millions of your dollars to mothball these ships? The story on the West. Sunday night at 6.30. Seven ten to play, first quarter. No score in Apple Cup 90. Keep chipping along with Ken Woody. Washington just picked up the first, first down of this contest. Attempting to find out who the injured player is for Washington State, lying at about the 18-yard line. And there's Mark Brunel, a good look at the young man who has uh, made a lot of people forget about Billy Joe Hobart this year. Uh, Ken Woody. Washington gifted with two outstanding athletes at quarterback, and Mark Brunel has taken charge of this club and guided them to eight victories. Well, the, their ability, both Hobart and Brunel's ability to run, have really given added dimension to the Husky offense. These guys are not only effective running the ball, they're fast, they can break tackles, run the option every now and then, very durable. The injured player believe to be Kirk Westerfield, Washington State's right tackle, redshirt junior from Benton City, Washington, who had been plagued by a hip injury, and number 64 is his uh, replacement, Constantino Romero, junior from Compton, Westerfield from Cayona Benton, a small eastern Washington town. Romero is glad to be back in the game, Keith. Last week against Arizona State, he was ejected for a punch to an Arizona State player after an extra point attempt. The Cougars had plenty to be frustrated about a week ago as they lost to Arizona State 51 to 26. Well, they are a totally different team. Last week, it was almost embarrassing. Uh, one had to question whether they were really interested in uh, winning the game, let alone competing. With every uh, series that goes by, the Cougar defense has to gain some more confidence. There's Tino Romero. Steps in tackle now. Second and eight situation. Jones and Bryant. And this is Bryant. Wrapped up at the 21 for no gain. Lee Tillman, the first one there for Washington State his ninth tackle for loss this season. Here's a great play by the outside linebackers here, maintaining leverage on the Huskies. Now that's the way you gotta do defense. You gotta keep people and funnel them back in the, uh, inside. Lurcher did a great job that time. So a third and eight situation now. Grinnell wrapped up and dropped. Along with Kurt Newton. Tino Romero in there as well. And now the Washington State defense is asking the Cougar fans to make some noise. Here's a great job of pressure up front by the Cougars. You can see they're getting they're maintaining the distance between the blocker. They got their hands up. A slip by Brunel. And the Cougars get their first sack. A big, big play. 
Here comes a 42-yard field goal effort from Travis Hansen. He is two of three this year. All have come from 40 to 49 yards. He missed last week from 45 yards away. This kick is plenty good. And Travis Hansen has come back to his side of the state and put the Washington Huskies in front of the Washington State Cougars by a 3-0 score with 5.32 to play in the first period. Ken Woody, pressure-packed kick for the young man from Mead High School in Spokane. It sure was, and I'll tell you, that's a lot different than the 42-yarder he tried last week against UCLA. That ball was kicked with a lot of confidence, just like his brother. I'll tell you what, though, the Cougars have got to feel real good about a basically a, a field position uh, disadvantage, and they get out of it with three points. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Crowds into the game. Cougars appear to be in the game, too. The injury status of Kirk Westerfield, Washington State's starting right tackle defensively. He has twisted an ankle. It is not serious. He is expected to return. So Washington State will not lose depth from that standpoint. The Cougar, or rather the Husky scoring drive, began at the 35-yard line after a short punt from Jason Hansen. Well, you know, as we get to ready for the kickoff here, this was one of the Husky weaknesses, and they went through several kickoff men before punter Channing Wiles uh, got the job, and he has kind of brought a lot of excitement for Husky fans because not no, no two kickoffs are the same, Keith. Knuckleball, slider, spitter, he's got them all. Washington State has... Tony Salter and Anthony Pryor need to receive the kickoff from Channing Wilds. It'll be Pryor at the goal line. Pryor to the 20 before being dropped by Mark Jones. And Washington State will start their first and 10 trailing 3-0. Again, the game was delayed by about 30 minutes in terms of starting time by an unfortunate incident prior to the game. They had to clear out the student section where they found an explosive device. That's why we're still in the first quarter at about quarter past four. First and ten. Trips right for the Cougars. This is Swint. Swint out to the 31-yard line for a first down. Washington State. Shane Kalkoa made the tackle. Keith, there's an example of how the wide open passing formation opened up some running lanes inside for the Cougars. You got to ask your, yourself the question, why don't they do that more often? You see there's some big holes in there. Not too difficult to uh, find them. Swinton has a 1,000 yard uh, rushing year behind him, so we know he's got some ability. He's on the game. 275 yards this year, including the 17 picked up today on four carries. On first down. Bledsoe nearly intercepted. William Doctor broke up the play. Philip Bobo was the intended receiver. Well, Mike Price was yelling at Bledsoe after the play, and I would assume that maybe one of the things he talked about, hey, you, you have just so long to wait back there. They're covered, take off. There was a chance he might have run around the left side, made some positive yardage. The longer you wait to throw against the Huskies, the more chances you have of throwing an interception. So it'll be second and 10 now from the 32-yard line. Paul Carr in motion. Play action in the middle. Complete to Philip Bobo at the 45-yard line. Kalkoa with a tackle, a 32-yard gain on the play. Washington State into Husky territory for the first time today. You're gonna see coming down the inside here, Bobo is wide open, and the Huskies are lucky that that wasn't uh, a touchdown. If Blitzow leads him properly, he runs it into the end zone. First and 10 from the Husky 45. Swinton met immediately by Cheney's Steve Empman. Empman in the backfield for the 15th time for a tackle this year. And the 6'4 sophomore from Cheney, who only got to play one play a year ago, is real excited 
to be out there against his cross-state rival today. I'll tell you, this kid gets off a block and physically dominates the ball carrier. That kind of tackle can excite your defense. Put a big thrill into the Husky contingent down to our left side there, Keith. Only a sophomore, 280 pounds. Second and 13, the ball at the Husky 48. No backs. Out of the hands of Philip Bobo, Chico Frele made that a tough catch. Well, the Cougars got in their formation where they have no backs. The Huskies have one similar. What it does, it creates a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Difficulty here is the Huskies underneath linebackers have the speed to stay with nearly all the Washington State wide receivers. Fraley broke up the play. The junior from Roland Heights, California. Didn't play in last year's game. Cougars did a real nice job of pass protection up the middle there. They're going to have to give an extra man on Entman as the game goes on. He's really the toughest pass rusher the Huskies have. Third and 13 for the shotgun. Bailey with the tackle. And there's his favorite pass, pass receiver again. You're going to see him out here from across the middle. Bledsoe does a nice job of finding him. Good pass protection by the Cougar. Here's a situation. I tell you, this kid can run with the football after he catches it. A redshirt freshman from Moreno Valley, California. Last week caught 10 passes for 100 yards and three touchdowns. He's caught two today for 51 yards. On first and 10, it's Swinton for perhaps a yard. Tyrone Rogers, looks like you're from Carson, California, in there first. Looked like there was a little bit of an opening on the left side there, but the Huskies were right there. They have the number two rushing defense in the country, number one in the Pac-10. A lot of things uh, you think the coach would say, well, it's not even used running the ball, but every time they run the football against the Washington defense, they're giving their offensive linemen a chance to come off the ball and hit somebody, maybe take a little bit off those pass rush situations. No gain on the play, so it'll be second and 10. Nobody's moving the tight end there. Trips left. And it goes to the tight end, Clarence Williams. Butch Williams inside the 14-yard line. Dave Hoffman made the tackle for Washington. And the Washington sideline right now is a real quiet one, watching anxiously. There was some confusion there between the outside linebacker. Not sure whether he should cover the tight end or not. It's good for the Huskies that he did come back in there. I think that's... That's Hoffman. That's one of the things that the no-back offensive set does. It creates situations where inside linebackers have got to come back to the outside and cover a pass receiver. Looks like Hoffman was a little bit confused about his assignment there. And a penalty flag on the play, an unsportsmanlike conduct foul against Washington State. Cougars have shown a lack of discipline the last two years, Keith. They have last last year they led the Pac-10 in penalties. This year they are ninth. Penalties have really hurt them. This will create a third and 19 situation now from the 29-yard line of Washington State. Shotgun formation again. Calvin Briggs goes to the left, as does Philip Bobo. Bobo fell down. As did Eric Briscoe. They look at one another and say, hey, pass interference. The official says no. That may not have been a catchable ball, Ken. I don't think it was a catchable ball. You see that uh, the receiver, Bobo, re Bobo runs a little snake route here up the sideline. They're trying to get kind of a pick here. Didn't really matter too much because Bobo lost his footing. Brought the defensive lineman down, defensive back down with him. Jason Hansen on the field with a 45-yard effort coming. Out of the hold of Jody Sears. This to the right half. Nearly blocked. Hansen's tied it up with a 45-yard field goal. And it's the Travis Hansen and Jason Hansen show right now. A minute 25 to play, first quarter. 
even the best drivers can get in an accident. But when you have Pemco insurance, help is always just a phone call away. Unlike some insurance companies that close at 5 p.m. and on weekends, there's always a live Pemco representative at the other end of the phone line to take your claim. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Help when you need it. Service from Pemco. To learn more, call our Seattle home office or our Spokane office toll-free from anywhere in Washington. This may be the perfect car for the growing family of the 90s. The all-new Ford Escort Wagon. It has room for two people, three people, four, five. It's good-looking, fun to drive, and it has a price a family can live with. Plus, options you don't want to live without. Best of all, it has plenty of space back here, so you never get stuck holding the bag. Drive it at your local Northwest Ford dealer. When she was three years old, Adriana Savannah took a pair of scissors and stuck them in her eye. It took two surgeons, four exhausting hours of surgery, and more than $8,000 to undo the damage. At King County Medical, that's something we'd like you to think about. Because even though the cost of health care can be a little hard to take, according to people like Adriana Savannah, it certainly beats. A 46-yard field goal from Jason Hansen has tied it up with a minute 25 seconds to play, first period. Hansen is set to kick things off now to the University of Washington. Mark Jones, Walter Bailey standing back inside their own five. To an up back. Washington will begin out at its 34-yard line. Here's the uh, extra point, or the field goal, a high snap, and this guy here almost gets it off the corner. Nice job by Hanson to get the ball off. Right now, the scoreboard should say Hanson three, Hanson three. Well, you got to imagine that their parents are just loving this. Well, this is almost the way you'd want it to come out if you were the parents. Both have ulcers by the time it's over. First and ten from the 34. Complete to the tight end. Aaron Pierce. Rod Plummer made the tackle. Nice job of defense by Rod Plummer. He's right there. Cougars doing a nice... Cougars positionally have been in position on defense, Keith. They're, doesn't look like they're going to try to force the issue with a lot of blitzing and stunning. They're going to play their positions. They tackle well, and the crowd keeps behind them. They have field position. Huskies could be in for a tough game. Gain of three on the play, and a passing play to Aaron Pierce, so it's second and seven now for Washington with one back. It's Matt Jones. He has the football out across the 40. Jones met by a host of crimson and gray. Rod Plummer was the first one there for Washington State. Plummer, the Cougars' second leading tackler this year. Huskies trying to break their formation, get one of the running backs out of the backfield and cause the, li the linebackers for the Cougars to widen a little bit. Offensive line doing a nice job up front with some uh, initial holes. The Cougars have been reacting to the plays very well. Gain of four on the play by Matt Jones. So it's third and three now. Huskies back to the I formation with Jones and Bryant. Option game. Brunel for the first down. John Diggs in to bring him down. I'll tell you, that's what Brunel does so well. On the move. Makes the decision to get upfield and get the first down as the quarter ends. Six yard gain for the Husky quarterback. We have reached the first quarter. Uh, the first quarter has ended here at Martin Stadium, and uh, we are pleased you've joined us for Apple Cup 90, Washington and Washington State tied at three apiece. Healthcare coverage for over 50 years. And by Mazda, it just feels right. Keith Chippen and Ken Woody back at Martin Stadium in Pullman. Pleased you've joined us for the 1990 Apple Cup game. Wherever you might be in the great Pacific Northwest, Travis Hansen kicked a 42-yard field goal in the first quarter for Washington. His brother, Jason, kicked a 46-yarder for Washington State. And that is the scoring as we get set to begin the second quarter of play. Huskies with the first ball, uh, football first and 10 from their own 47. McKay 
breaks one tackle, and he's down to the 40-yard line for a Husky first down. Diggs and Michael Wright finally wrapped him up after Chris Moton let him escape. Cougars blitzed on the play, and there's what we were talking about earlier. Here's Moton, who's formerly an outside linebacker, having to cover one of the fastest receivers on the Husky team. And as you can see him try to tackle in the open field here, he's a little bit outmatched. Orlando McKay, a member of the Huskies 4x400 four meter relay team, which was very successful at the Pac-10 championships a year ago. First and 10, just inside the 40. Here's Bryant for a couple of yards. Dan Weber made the tackle for the Cougars, along with Kurt Lurcher. Cougars up front, showing a lot of muscle. Penn State upset top-ranked Notre Dame today. Perhaps the dream hasn't died for Washington. Kansas uh, State losing to Colorado, so the Buffaloes will likely be number one next week. Georgia Tech, a winner. Brigham Young, a winner as well today. Number one falls again. Second down, Matt Jones to the 35. Kirk Newton, the first one there. Football's loose, but the play was whistled dead. You know, we talked about the rivalry, Keith. This is absolutely amazing, the difference between the Cougar defense this week, what, what we've seen all year round. They're playing with enthusiasm, with intensity, with aggressiveness. The crowd's egging them on. You can almost hear Mike Price's comment after the game. Maybe we need to play the Huskies every week. And well, uh, that's a scary thought. Well, I've always said that, you know, the Huskies bring out the best in Washington State, you know. Life would be very dull playing the Oregon State 11 times a year. 35. Backfield is emptied out. Grinnell over the middle. Aaron Pierce into the end zone for a touchdown. with his third touchdown reception of the season. A 35-yard strike from Mark Brunel, which has put the Huskies back on top with 13.04 to play in the first half. Kurt Newton, the Cougars linebacker, just stopped on the play. Pierce ran right by him. He looked like he wasn't sure whether they play in zone or man. Let Pierce run just straight down the field and score the touchdown. Travis Hansen on to kick the extra point out of the hole to Brunel, and the Washington Huskies have jumped back on top 10 to 3. Please have joined us for Apple Cup 90. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Penalty flag is thrown on the play. Channing Wiles has improved his kicking in each of the last five games in this kickoff tour. Here's the drive, four plays on the ground and three through the air. Huskies broke 66 yards for the end zone to regain the lead. Well, it's very important that the Cougar offense get a little of that momentum back, try to get the crowd back into the game. That's probably their biggest ally right now. And, uh, Cougars will start from their own 17-yard line. Or will they? They will be backed up after the penalty. A holding penalty against Washington State on the return. The referee's microphone, the microphone that we normally have on referees for Jim Fogeltance, that's, that's the one that's heard in the stadium, is uh, very close to the radio frequency that's used by the University of Washington coaching staff. Therefore, the referee has discontinued using it because it's in interfering with the Husky coaches. Bledsoe brings him up first and 10. Balls on the eight-yard line of Washington State. And this is Swinton. Muscles forward to perhaps the 11-yard line. Steve Entman will be credited with a tackle on the play. Well, you know, we've neglected to mention this, really, but the Cougars have not run very often this year with two offensive running backs in the, in the game at the same time. And that's what they're doing. When they're going to a one-back set, they're running one of the running backs in motion, trying to get the Huskies to take a linebacker outside give them a better chance of getting a running lane inside. 
just the deception that some of the Cougar players talked about this week? Well, I think partially, but you know, Carr and Swinton are good backs, and they, I think they ought to be on the field at the same time. Swinton in motion this time, leaving Carr in the backfield. And let's say we'll pass. Bobo was the intended receiver. Safety blitz that time. Briscoe came, was picked up uh, very nicely by Paul Carr. You know, we talked about Swinton and Carr. They have the speed to get out as receivers, too. So they kind of give a, a, a double double threat dimension to the Cougars' offense. Eric Briscoe, so Mincy in that secondary, playing very well. Now, if the Cougars wanted to break a, a big... Uh, uh, prediction here they would run the football they nearly always pass in third down they're the last in the Pac-10 in third down conversion rates for the season Bledsoe is completing 51% of his passes chased out now gets rid of it incomplete nearest receiver was Butch Williams and that'll create a fourth down well good coverage by the Husky secondary good pressure by the up front people Bledsoe has a bad habit of letting the ball come down around his waist as he's looking for people. That can create a fumble situation. There's a situation he should have just taken off and run with the football. Hansen with the punt, and this is a beauty. Bailey back, and they run the reverse again. Here's Bryant, escapes one tackle. Still on his feet. Bryant is out to midfield and nearly breaks it for the end zone. What a tremendous return from Bean O'Brien. The crowd was very upset there, Keith, because number... Number 43 for the Huskies. You can see he puts his hand out right there, put his hand out on Lurcher and slowed him down. It looked like he tried to grab him, then last minute pulled his arm back. Everyone saw it but the referees. Bryant with an exciting return. Huskies start first and 10 from the Cougar 46 yard line. A gain of one before Jerron Woodley brings down the ball carrier. Well, that was a big play by Woodley. We talked earlier, you know, whether the Cougars would rather try to tackle a 175-pound tailback or somebody like uh, Greg Lewis, who weighs 210 pounds. There was a situation where no one was going to break that tackle. Gain of one. Second and nine. Brunel slipping again. Incomplete. Brunel's having problems with his footing. Ken, and uh, the Husky coaching staff is not all that fond of Omniturf. It's the same turf we see at the University of Oregon each year. Well, the, the fans at home may see a little bit of a, a gloss on the top of the, the turf here, and that sand that works its way to the uh, top. You can see it right there. He's, he's actually near the, uh, the insignia as well. But that, you can slip, particularly later at night here when there's moisture in the, uh, the after turf. Second time that that problem has surfaced for Mark Brunel. Darius Turner, Dino Bryant in the backfield on third and nine. Brunel incomplete. The intended receiver was Orlando McKay. Ron Ricard providing coverage. And the Huskies will bring the punt team on. Right now the Huskies two for six third down conversions. That was a big series for the Cougars. After that uh, punt return, which might have uh, stimulated another touchdown drive, Cougar defense playing exceptionally well. Best they've played all year so far. John Diggs standing back at his 10-yard line, awaiting the punt of Channing Wilds. Wilds with a high kick aimed toward the corner. Diggs, fair caught at the 11-yard line, and that's where the Cougars will take over when we come back to Martin Stadium. Everybody is concerned about controlling insurance costs. Pemco is concerned, too, but it's a complex... Cougars have a long way to go. They'll start first and 10 from their own 12-yard line. 
We talked about the Cougars trying to make this a field position game. That's just what the Huskies are doing right now. They've not been threatened. Threatened but once, really, with the big penalty, moved them out of good field position. The Cougars have had to, their backs to the wall their last three trips with the football, Keith. First and ten. No backs in the backfield. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Heavy rush. They'll mark it down at the one-yard line. Bledsoe got crunched. Travis Richardson and Tyrone Rogers were in the backfield, leading that Husky charge that's recorded 46 sacks this year. If you look at the right side of the offensive line, they just have no chance of blocking those guys. It's very difficult for the Cougar offensive line when put in a one-on-one -on -one situation of protecting. That's just what happened there. Richardson just blew by his man. Cook's in there, everybody. That's not a real good formation down there on that part of the field for the Cougars. Second and 21 now from the one. Cougars looking for some room to work, and they give it to Swinton. You know, Keith, we talk about the Cougar offense. One of the things that has plagued them is they've not put their offensive line in a situation where they can be successful. That particular formation, those people out there have very little chance of blocking the Huskies. And in that part of the field, they're putting themselves really at, uh, uh, in jeopardy. Well, the rushing numbers are interesting right now. Washington was 46 yards on the ground. The Cougars with net one. Out of the back of the end zone for a safety. They were in the shotgun formation and it got away from Bledsoe. Bob Norvell, the center. Well, right before that happened, Keith, I was wondering about the possibility possibly of a, uh, quick, a kick. quick kick, but, you know, this may sound a little strange, but this may actually work in the Cougars' favor. They're giving up two points, but they're going to get a chance to kick it from the 20 and get the Huskies perhaps that much further on their side of the 50. Emotionally, though, you don't want to give up a safety. Cougars have not been in the shotgun much this year. Hard to hear the signals. It's just, it's just really demoralizing to have a bad snap. You want to put your quarterback in the end zone in the shotgun formation. How much sense does that make? Well, <laughs> tough question for the ex-coach. I wouldn't put him there myself. Uh, and that's a question that Cougar fans will ask this week, certainly, and the one which Mike Price. Well, I'm sure, you know, you, you don't want to coach or call your place from a negative situation, but it comes a time where you've got to say, hey, what, what could happen as a result of us trying to do this? Cougars just marched backwards for a safety. They began that drive at their own 12, and the free kick, Hanson, to Walter Bailey, then at the 35-yard line. You can see a real spirited hitting attack going on right now for the Washington State defense. T.J. Polker's the first one there, along with Anthony McClanahan. And Washington State, quite frankly, looked flat a week ago from the uh, defensive standpoint. First and 10 Huskies from their own 35. Bryant to the right. Three receivers to the right now for Washington. Over the middle to Kilpack, the tight end, out to the 44. Kurt Lurcher with the tackle. Kilpack is mostly a possession receiver for the Huskies. Gain of nine on that play. It'll be a second and one situation now for the Huskies. Here are the weaknesses that the Cougars have got to work with. Third down team attitude you got to wonder if they really want to win this game the way they played the last two weeks their offense doesn't play well under pressure their defense can't play man to man very well they can't blitz can't get pressure on people on third down second and one Bryant picks up the first down and more as he's down to the 46 of Washington State John Diggs wrapped him up Vino Bryant filling the shoes of 
the Pac-10's leading rusher, Greg Lewis, who is sitting out this game with a knee injury. He underwent arthroscopic surgery on Wednesday afternoon. He is expected to return for the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Lewis had started 22 games in a row for Washington. And so anytime you put a new guy back there, you, you're bound to have some some question marks to answer. Well, Bino looked really tight when he got in there against UCLA. You know, you could see that he was pressing. He dropped a couple of short passes. I mean, he has all the credentials. He's, a, he's got sprinter speed, first class. He can break a tackle. He is, I tell you, he's one of the most exciting and versatile players in the Pac-10. He can return kicks, return punts. And you see the armband. He's wearing GL on his right arm. Number 20 on his other arm for Greg Lewis. That's right. Greg Lewis is a, is a leader of the offense. I think that he has a great, just his presence has a great impact on the whole Husky team. He said coming in he wanted to play his heart out for Greg Lewis. He wanted to make Greg Lewis proud of his effort. Well, I think that speaks very highly of the chemistry that the Huskies have on their team this year. They have a lot of respect for each other. You watch them on the sidelines during their game. They, they get along well. They, everybody... Uh, Everybody roots for each other. There doesn't seem to be many clicks on the team. And, you know, that's easy to say when you're number two in the country or you're going to go to the Rose Bowl. But I think it was that way right when the season began. The delay was because the 25-second clocks were malfunctioning. They have resumed their operation. Option game. Bryant out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And Brunel is uh, examining his left thumb. Okay, you see right here, Cougars, they're not getting any inside pressure on the, the pitch man. They forced the pitch well. That linebacker ran inside the block. He should have been there for the pitch. Get the ball at the 39-yard line, a beat of seven of the play, and second and three now. Darius Turner forward for the first down. Kurt Newton. The senior from Kansas City, Kansas, the second leading tackler in the Pac-10, who missed last week's game with a knee injury. He was questionable coming in today, but he has played nearly every down on defense for Washington State. The Turner really impressed us uh, last year. I think he's really the outstanding fullback in the Pac-10. He's got a lot of quickness. When people overplay that tailback, he has the ability to do a lot of cutback kind of plays himself from the fullback position. Turner looked to have picked up the first down. They're bringing the sticks on to measure now. There's Ray Heisman holding the football. And Jim Fogle fans will go down and show us that they are just inches short of the first down. There's Mark Brunel having his hand examined by the Husky training staff, and he's on his way back out now. We'll have to try to get an update on the status of that injury and see if it's anything that might be affecting Greg's play. So third and a short few inches for Washington. Ball is just outside the 36. Penalty flag, movement. Look like the Cougars might have been offside there. Husky players are applauding whatever the flag is for, so you assume it's going against the Cougars. Offside against Washington State for a first down. Well, it's that third down bugaboo. I mean, third one, you don't concede the first down. There might have been a fumble. You know, anything can happen. The Cougars jumping offside just hurt their chances of making a big play. Jerron, That's hurt them all year. Jerron Woodley, the guilty party, so a first down by penalty. Football at the 31-yard line of Washington State. Darius Turner in motion, and he'll lead the way for Bino O'Brien. He's down to the 29. For a gain of two, Anthony McClanahan is there as well as Dan Weber from Washington State. Weber, the redshirt senior from Bellevue, McClanahan, sophomore from Bakersfield, California. The Cougar defensive line is doing a really nice job of standing the Husky offensive line up at the line of scrimmage. Oh! Wonder, wonder if she had to buy a ticket. Well, I'm never very good at baby, so maybe it was a he. 
hear about that. Second and nine. Backfield is empty. The draw. Brunel trying to get outside. Driven out of bounds at the 28-yard line by Michael Wright. And you can see Brunel is bleeding. That towel is uh, filled with blood. It looks like his uh, left index finger has been cut. Well, the Cougars were right there, Keith. They missed two tackles. Again, they've been in position to make the play several occasions, but court tackling really hurt them. Third down. Game is six by Brunel. Two yards to go for a first down. Darius Ferris, a long setback. Forward for perhaps two yards. Lee Tillman made the tackle for the Cougars. An all-academic selection a year ago. Tillman is married. So they're going to be shy of the first down. And now they'll start making some noise. And the Huskies have been on fourth down have converted six of ten this year. The Cougars' opponents... 69%, 9 for 13. This is the biggest play of the game. This could give the Cougars a big lift if they can hold them here. 6.20 to play in the first half and the clock running, and now umpire is going to step in and stop play. Washington wants timeout. And we'll take a break as well with 6.16 to play in the first half. Please to join us for Apple Cup 90, the Huskies in front 12-3. Every year, people compete in the Winter Games. There's the chain drop, the lift and toe, the hat toss, and plenty of sideline activity. But the Subaru Legacy lets you play the game differently. It's got four-wheel drive for added traction, and anti-lock brakes for more controlled stop. And because it's the lowest-priced car with four-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes, this is the only Winter Game you'll compete in. With factory-to-dealer incentives, now's the time to get a Subaru Legacy with anti-lock brakes. Do the little things on your airline work as well as they should? Before you get on an Alaska Airlines plane, we make sure everything is shipshape, inside and out. This is what they were tending to during the timeout. Brunel, uh, it just remains to be seen if that's going to affect his passing. I think, you know, if you're going to hurt any one of your fingers, that's probably the one to do. Doug Callen, the assistant trainer, attending to Brunel's index finger. Fourth and one from the 22. High formation with Turner. Jay Barry for perhaps a yard. Barry, the sophomore from North Glen, Colorado, with his first carry today. And there may well be a measurement coming. The Husky offensive line has a 17 pounds per man advantage, but really not demonstrating it so far. The Cougars playing inspired football up front. This depends on if this is a left foot or right footed spot. They got the first down by the length of a football. So why?
Washington keeps its drive alive as Jay Barry carries for a couple of yards. Ball just outside the 20-yard line. Huskies trying to add to their nine-point lead with six minutes to play here in the first half. Bryant inside the 20. Kurt Newton with the initial hit. Chris Moton helped bring him down. Chris Moton is lining up so far inside McKay that McKay cannot come in and block him without uh, clipping him. And pretty good strategy by the Cougars to stop that outside game. Although Moton was not in great position to help on the pass had the Huskies been throwing the football. Darius Turner, Bino Bryant in the backfield. Here's Bryant inside. And inside the 10-yard line to perhaps the eight where it'll be first and goal for the Huskies. McClanahan made the tackle. As Bino Bryant made his cut there back to the inside, he did a nice job of faking the uh, linebacker, Newton. Newton pushed to the outside. There's a move right there that made uh, Fryer just fall right down. That, excuse me, that was the safety. Bryant with 42 yards now. Fake John Diggs right down to his to his knees. First and goal. Darius Turner inside the five. John Diggs with the tackle. He'll spot it just outside the two-yard line. Ron Ricard was there as well for Washington State. Huskies are really effective with a quick, quick hitting running game so far. Turner's just a sophomore. The Huskies with three sophomores in the backfield. Brunel, Bryant, and Darius Turner to start this game. They've played a lot today. Now they bring Jay Barry back in the lineup. He, too, is a sophomore. Good look at the future right here for the Huskies. Turner in motion. Barry, very near the goal line, but did he get in? No signal as yet. Apparently not. Ron Ricard stopped him short of the goal line. Well, you can see Moton's coming on the blitz. Pretty good job by Barry. Looks like he, is, he was down originally a little bit short of where they uh, eventually spotted the football. Nevertheless, third down, big play for the Cougars. Third and goal, inches from the goal line. Turner and Barry remain in the backfield. Grinnell gives to Barry, and he's in for the score. Touchdown, Washington, as Jay Barry carries from a yard away. And the visitors have gone in front, 18 to three. Well, Chris Moton was right there to meet Barry, but Barry just ran over him into the end zone. Travis Hansen on to kick the extra point. It's good, but he fell to his bottom. He lost his footing as well. With three and a half minutes to play in the first half, Washington has jumped in front 19 to 3. You see Chris Moton on the right hand side of your screen here. Fights off a block. He's right there to make the play. He can't do it. That's really the difference between the Cougar defense and the Husky defense. Huskies are right there. Make the play. Keep that guy out of the end zone. Moton fought off two blocks. You got to make that play. Good running by Barry. see Channing Wiles testing that turf, trying to find out what kind of planting ability he's going to have. Well, you know, it's really true. As it, as it gets uh, later in the year, Keith, later in the evening, it, it gets very slick out there. Well, we've not had snow, and we've not had wind nor rain. But the night's not over. 
65-yard drive for Washington. Jay Berry scored on third and one for the touchdown. Well, Keith, the Cougar offense has got to get some first downs here. At least get some kind of movement if uh, this is going to be a football game. The defense is playing very, very well, and the offense has got to take some pressure off of them. Tony Salter and Anthony Pryor back at their own goal line. This time to Pryor. Good room. Pryor with one man to beat. And the kicker, Channing Wiles, drags him out of bounds. Penalty flag is down at about the 24-yard line. Anthony Pryor, who averages 21 yards per return, sprung one there. Looked like it was a push in the back. Keith. And this one's coming back. This, this penalty's gonna this penalty's gonna cost the Cougars 45 yards. It happened somewhere on the 24-yard line. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Hard to tell what they called there. It looked like one of the Huskies was kind of pivoting. He's hitting the rear, but hard to tell from our angle. At any rate, the Cougars just gave up 45 yards of uh, real estate. And that was a 47-yard return that goes for not. Cougars will start first and 10 from their own 14. Bledsoe, play action. Wrapped up, and he's going to go down. Travis Richardson was the first one there. And the Washington State offensive line, which has allowed 40 sacks this year coming into the game, has now allowed 43. Well, you look out and see how uh, the back could have just run right through that uh, a huge hole there. You kind of wonder why the Cougars don't give it to them one time on that play. They've run this play action scheme twice so far and have yet to run a running play with that action. Here they go. They're going backwards again. And they're backed up to their own six-yard line after the loss of eight on the play. Second and 18. Shotgun once again. Pass is complete to Calvin Griggs at the 18. Shane Palkoa made the tackle. Let's go, Let's pause for 10 seconds to allow our network affiliates to identify themselves. This is the Northwest Zone Apple Cup 90. Watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Wednesday night on Q13, and you might win a Nintendo Game Boy. Tune in Wednesday night at 8 on KCPQ13. On third and six, Bledsoe to Griggs once again for a first down out to the 35-yard line. Pal Cole with the tackle again for Washington. The Huskies have backed off into a zone defense the last two plays, and Bledsoe has got the kind of arm he can pick a zone apart. Huskies may have to resort to putting a little pressure on them. Coming with a stun up front or perhaps a blitz. 19 yard gain in the play. A first down for Washington State and they'll use a timeout here with one minute 50 seconds to play in the first half. Trailing 19 to three. And we've seen Bledsoe's arm strength the last two plays. Well, no question. No question about it. I've got a good friend who's a defensive coordinator at Oregon who saw Bledsoe when he was at Walla Walla High School and said he was the finest quarterback he'd ever seen in high school. And everything I've seen leads me to believe that that's true. A lot of big-time teams were after him, Washington, Miami. You see him throw. He's relatively flat-footed as he throws the football. He's got a nice ability to look one way and then come back to another receiver. This is something that Mike Price says he's got to work on more. He tends to look at his receivers too long. Huskies were in kind of a soft zone like that. Last week against Arizona State, the Cougars scored a touchdown a little over a minute against Arizona State in a similar situation, Keith. So I think the Huskies have seen that film and they're not gonna, they're not gonna give Blitzo a chance to sit back there and pick them apart. 
Calvin Griggs has two receptions now. 25 yards. First and 10 from the 35 yard line of Washington State. Here comes the rush again. They set up the screen. It's off the hands of Paul Carr. And so it'll be second down. Both quarterbacks have shown a little bit of a tendency today of under pressure to throw the ball high. Bledsoe every once in a while throws the ball real hard on a short pass. He's got to learn to take a little bit off of that. The ball, like the turf, will get slippery as the evening wears on. Clock stopped with a minute 44 after the incomplete pass. On second down, they'll work for the shotgun. Complete to Griggs, who falls down at midfield, but it's a first down for Washington State. Charles Mincy made the tackle. They'll spot it at the 49-yard line after a 16-yard passing game. You can't stand in there much longer than that without the roof caving in. Bledsoe, tell you what, he's not afraid of anybody back there. He'll throw again. This time, complete. And... Out of bounds goes Brett Carolyn, the tight end. Walter Bailey drove him out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock with 1.26 to play in the first half. The Cougars operating with their clock plan drive here. This would be a great time to run a draw play. Picked up six yards on the play, down to the 43. The Cougars are going to operate from the shotgun again. Carr and Swit in the backs. Over the head of Bledsoe. Ball still loose. It can be advanced. And the Huskies recover the football. And we've got a bit of extracurricular activity going on here now. Shane Paukoa is wrapped up with Bob Garman. Both benches are clearing now. And let's hope that this doesn't get too out of hand. Here's what's bad about the, you see a safety blitz come right here and the snap's gonna go over Bledsoe's head. This is one of the disadvantages of the shotgun. The safety blitz happens to be coming. You gotta wonder, Keith, the Cougars just set themselves up for bad things to happen. Mark Jones recovered the fumble and as they're coming out of it, Bob Garman got hooked up in the middle with Shane Palcoa and you see, uh, you see why. The Husky coaches did a great job of keeping all their players on the bench. Can't say the same for the Cougar coaches there. They got out there in a hurry. First and 10 Huskies from the 37 of Washington. They're going for it all. Touchdown, Mario Bailey. How many times do you see that happen? The Huskies turn a turnover into points. Well, Brunel almost slips and falls down here before he delivers the football. And the Cougars are going to get a 15-yard penalty to be sides. And you see the free safety trying to get over there. What a great catch from Mario Bailey. Oh, the a perfect from throw. Seattle's Franklin High School. Absolutely perfect throw. Brunel almost slipped and fell down. Still able to throw the ball right on the money. Bailey said he wanted to go to school at Washington State. He was recruited hard by Dennis Erickson. He said he respected him because he, he went to Seattle to watch a, a Franklin Garfield game, and he didn't think anybody would go there because of the dangerousness of the neighborhood. He said it jokingly, of course. He made his visit here on a cold weekend and was sold a couple of weeks later on to the University of Washington. And it's not been a bad choice for Mario. He has excelled as a Husky. I was still on the Cougar staff when uh, we, we looked at uh, Mario when he was still in high school as a junior. He was the finest wide receiver I'd ever seen in high school. He had a flair for the acrobatic catch. 
As I called, as I said earlier, he's one of the premier big play receivers in the Pac-10. He averages 16 yards a reception. And a lot like the kid at Arizona State, very difficult to tackle one-on-one -on -one in the open field. And the Cougars give up a big play, and then they're going to get an unsportsmanlike conduct uh, penalty tacked on. The Cougars have a drive going. They turn the football over, and Washington, on the very next play, turns it into seven point or six points. Of 30 turnovers, the Huskies have forced this year. They, they have produced 86 points. Fans, uh, we're looking out to the left there. The fans are kind of said they've had enough. Huskies will go for two. Brunel untouched. And Washington is in front 27 to 3. to play. Let's see Don James looking very calm, cool, and collected right now. Here's the two-point conversion. This is what you call walking it into the end zone. Looked like the safety was responsible for the quarterback that time, and that makes it, that's one of the difficult things about a very active quarterback. Hard to get to him, and he can turn it up wherever he gets a seam, and the man responsible for him has got to be in that situation, too. Washington out to a 24-point lead, playing very much like the Pacific 10 Conference champions right now. Here's Mario Bailey's touchdown catch. Perfect pass. It comes in straight down. There was no chance for the defender to be there. Was Ron Ricard trying to make the play, not the safety. Well, a lot of people have maligned Brunel's throwing ability, but that ball was right on the money. That was a big time throw. So instead of uh, moving toward the end zone for a score at the end of the half, Washington State turns it over, and the Huskies do that. Salter out to the 30-yard line where Washington State will take over. Charles Mincy made the tackle. College Football 90 is a copyrighted presentation of the Kelly Television Company and any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this program without the expressed written consent of Kelly Television and Washington State University is prohibited. Well, it's really strange, Keith. The Cougars are on a march. They might make it 20 to 10 before halftime. Now it's 27 to 3. Bledsoe to Bobo out to the 40-yard line. Dave Hoffman made the tackle. 57 seconds to play first half. Looked like Collins had him wrapped up initially, but Bledsoe did a nice job of getting away from him. He's 6'5", 220 pounds. He's difficult to bring down. Now, since the 4.07 mark of the first period when Jason Hansen booted a 46-yard field goal, the Cougars have been shut out. Bledsoe to Bobo once again to the Husky 45. Walter Bailey with coverage. The Cougars have the second best pass offense in the league. When they're cooking, they're hard to stop. Bobo with four receptions now for 66 yards. 45 seconds to play. First half. Complete and out of bounds goes Calvin Griggs. You can see Drew Bledsoe is starting to move around a little bit, get away from that rush. Offensive line doing a real nice job. Cougars can move it in a hurry. Still with two timeouts left. It's, I keep pulling for the draw play. That's something no one would expect, I'm sure. 
First and 10, ball at the 33-yard line now. Cougars with two timeouts remaining in the half. Lots of pressure. Bledsoe throwing deep for Griggs. Incomplete. And the Cougars are interested in pass interference there, but they're not going to get it. Charles Minchie providing coverage made a nice defensive play. How Bledsoe escaped this mess, I don't know. You see, he's a difficult guy to bring down. He's very strong. He just puts it up for grabs here. You really don't like to see that, although Briggs had a shot at it. I would not say that's pass interference. And so it is now second and 10 from the 33 of Washington with 27 seconds to play in the first half. Three receivers to the right now for the Cougars. Comes the rush again. They go up the screen pass, and that's snuffed out by John Cook, who tackles Rich Swinton. Cook, the senior, playing in his last Apple Cup game. Paul Carr caught the pass. Richard Jr. from Bellevue's Interlake High School. The Cougars have exercised one of their timeouts here with 19 seconds to play in the first half. Well, we had mentioned that the Cougars have a real difficult time on third down as an offense. They don't have a big play receiver with a speed like Tim Stallworth. Huskies match up very well. Cougars are really forced to a lot of short patterns. A situation like that, they wanted to get a a screen pass hoping they could block the linebacker responsible for Carr. Didn't work out that way. Good coverage by the Huskies. And that's film study on the part of John Cook. He has watched film, one of the, the most uh, intent on being educated about his opponent each week. And he no doubt knew that play was coming the minute he saw the thing develop. Well, John Cook's uh, career as a Husky has really been as an overachiever. He's made himself into a very, very outstanding football player. Had to work his way up the depth, depth roster. Made a big play right there. Washington State has minus 30 yards rushing. Factor that into the 113 that they have total offense. Third and 13 after the screenplay lost three yards. Swinton in motion. Carr the lone setback now. Penalty flags. Officials will have a discussion here and figure out how to sort this one out. Looked like somebody moved inside right before the snap. Don't know why you'd ask the back judge about that. <laughs> 17 seconds to play in the first half. Washington leading Washington State 27 to 3. The legal procedure against Washington State. And third and 12 now becomes third and, what's well, third and 18 now. They are still not out of Jason Hansen's field goal range, but they're nearing it. Yes. Well, he kicked a 70-yarder in pregame warm-ups before Arizona State last week, but that was with the wind. And bear in mind, Washington State was at the Husky 33. They're now at the 41-yard line. Carr is the lone setback. Bledsoe will pass. Going long, looking for Philip Bobo, and a penalty flag comes down. That'll be an automatic first down. Shane Paukoa. Well, if that's, a, if that's on the Huskies, they're going to be really upset because they're going to say that ball was uncatchable. Really, from this angle, it looked like it was pretty well overthrown. That may be what one of the officials is telling the head official now. Oh, they're going to call it. Interference on the Huskies. And it will not be spotted where the foul occurred. Instead, they will go back to the line of scrimmage and mark it off. Well, here's a replay. You've got to decide for yourself if this ball is catchable or not. Don't know. Well, you know, referees get emotional too sometimes. This crowd is electric.
It'll be first and 10 for Washington State with 14 seconds remaining in the first half. And the Cougars have elected to use their final timeout of the first half. right now by using that timeout have eliminated the possibility of really two plays. They're going to have to throw the ball to the outside, maybe the corner of the end zone. Had they not used that timeout, they might have been able to throw one down the middle against the zone defense, still be in a position to throw in the end zone one more time before they might elect for the field goal opportunity. This situation, they've got to go for the end zone now and probably back that up with a chance at a field goal if they don't get a touchdown. You know, we talk about the, 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 the difficulties they make for themselves. They're just, you know, some of the things, decisions and things that they do are limiting their options. First and 10 for Washington State from the 25. Again, 14 seconds left in the first half. Washington State trying to get on the scoreboard before they go to the dressing room for the halftime intermission. Swinton and Carr are the backs. Bledsoe with time. Going for the end zone. Ball ball incomplete with six seconds left. Shane Palkoa provided coverage. Here's a replay of the play. Once again, Bledsoe is quite dangerous himself when on a run. You see how he flicks this ball across his body with a lot of zip on it. He put it right there. A little hot to handle. Field goal attempt for the Cougs. It's going to be a 41-yard, perhaps a 42-yard effort for Hanson. Block. That's the fifth block this year. Washington State special team didn't get it blocked, and the Huskies knocked down Hanson's field goal attempt. A high snap, the fifth time that Hanson's had a kick blocked this year. Hillary Butler appeared to be the first man through as the first half comes to an end. Well, Keith, here's the second time that a snap is going to be high, and you can see what happens. They almost blocked it the first time off the corner, and this time the Huskies are going to get it. Quinn Magnus in the deep snapper. As soon as we saw the snap, that was almost predictable. The kicker really doesn't have a chance on that. He's got to wait till that ball is put down. Now let's go to the field and get the thoughts of Cougar head coach Mike Price in the first half. Mike, your impression? A little shaky start here, I think. We're a little ragged. We're not... Uh, settle down and poised enough right now. So we've got to get ourselves back together, get back in this game. We can do it. We can get we can get three touchdowns and field goal right away. Your team showed that it can move the football. Yeah, there. we can move the football. And we put ourselves in terrible field position with two penalties on kickoff returns. We can't do that, you know. So, uh, and I think we can return the kickoff if, if they kick off again. But we've just got to settle down a little bit. Our defense didn't play that bad, and, and uh, we'll get it going. Mike, thanks for being with us All at right. halftime. We'll let you All get right, to your Keith. club. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Halftime is here at Martin Stadium in Pullman. The Washington Husky Marching Band and the Washington State Marching Bands will perform at halftime. We'll come back to Martin Stadium for halftime activity. You're watching Apple Cup 90. First half of this football game. Well, Don apparently cannot hear us at this time. So we'll uh, hope to get the impressions of the Husky head coach following today's game. Oh, I guess we, Don can hear us now. Don, your impressions of the first half of the football game? Well, it started a little bit slow for us, but uh, we got going. We had a great second quarter, and uh, I can't be too displeased with the way our team's played at all. Your defense has come out and established itself, particularly at the line of scrimmage, getting a lot of pressure on Bledsoe. Yeah, we've had some key sacks. We've got him in a minus yardage mode, and uh, again, it's uh, he'll come out throwing, though. This will be There'll be a lot of passes this second half. Okay, Dom, we'll let you get back to your club. Thanks for Thanks. being with us at halftime. 
And we'll come back with the second half of tonight's game in just a moment. Why do more people bank at Seafirst? That's easy. We have over 180 branches. We're the only bank in Washington to offer a Versatel card that gives you access to more than 50,000 cash machines across the country. Banking should be easy. Well, the beauty of the 24-hour phone service is just what it says. They can talk to an actual person. A real person that can solve your problem. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, you can get it done. Because we want to make banking easy. I'm going to tell you, if I didn't work at Seafirst, I'd still bank you. There's nowhere easier to do your banking. Hamburger buns are okay, but they don't exactly do anything for a burger. But with this grilled sourdough burger, beef, bacon, cheese on grilled food. Apple Cup 90 has been brought to you by Rainier. Around here, it's Rainier. By American Isuzu, makers of the all-new rodeo. By Pemco Financial Center, home of Evergreen Bank. Pemco Insurance Companies and Washington School Employees Credit Union. And by your local Northwest Ford dealer, where you can buy America's best-selling cars and trucks. We're about set to get the second half underway here at Martin Stadium as Channing Wiles puts it on the tee to kick off. Anthony Pryor and Tony Salter are back at their own goal line for Washington State. The 10th ranked Washington Huskies en route to the Rose Bowl and it appears that they will meet Iowa if the Hawkeyes beat Minnesota next week. Well you could tell by Don James remarks that he's not counting his chickens before they had the Cougars as long as they have a football and some time on the clock are dangerous. Question is are they more dangerous to the Huskies or to themselves. There'd have to be a complete breakdown on the part of the Huskies right now. And there's no sign of that happening. Pryor, five yards deep in the end zone, and the Cougars will begin first and ten from their own 20-yard line to start the second half. There's Mike Price with his freshman quarterback, Drew Bledsoe. The Cougars have an outstanding freshman class. It remains to be seen how patient folks will be with Mike Price. That's very true. I, the, the Cougar fans are very emotional. I think they might have been led to believe they're going to be better than they were this year. I thought going in at the very best, the Cougars were a 50-50 team. Bledsoe was 11 for 21 in the first half, 143 yards. On first down, three receivers to the top of your screen. Heavy pressure, and he's wrapped up and dropped. Travis Richardson, Brett Collins in on the stop for the University of Washington. Fifth sack today. You can just see that the Husky defensive secondary is doing a terrific job of covering everybody. Bledsoe's just left with the ball. Richardson, Jones, Antman, Cook. These guys put terrific pressure on any quarterback, let alone a true freshman from Walla Walla. Richardson playing in his final Apple Cup game as well. The senior from Olympia's Timberline High School. Bledsoe back to pass. Incomplete. Intended for Calvin Grigg. Travel arranged through Continental Airlines, serving Seattle's business needs with convenient daily non-stops to Newark. Continental, the airline to New York. It'll be third and 15 now for Washington State after the incomplete pass. Second half just underway. Keith Trippman along with Ken Woody at Martin Stadium. Please have joined us for our coverage of the 1990 Apple Cup game. Cougars were two out of six third down conversions in the first half. Bledsoe over the middle. It's incomplete again intended for Griggs. William Doctor providing coverage for the University of Washington. Cougars kept two backs in the backfield there to help the protection. Really, there's nothing wrong with the protection. Nobody can get open downfield. A credit to the Husky secondary, which Dana Hall, who's a key player back there, said coming into the season they didn't have much respect, but they've certainly achieved that respect through their play this year. <laughs> Rank first against the pass, as they do in every category defensively in the Pac-10. Hanson, a high kick. Dino Bryant signals for the fair catch and does so at the Husky 47-yard line, which is where Washington will begin first and 10. It's, own, it's first uh, possession of the second half of this game. The Huskies got nine first downs in the first half. 
pretty balanced offense. Ran 26 times for 96 yards, five for eight passing category, total offense 193 yards. They really had the short field to go on most of their drives except the uh, first touchdown march, which was 66 yards. Huskies have established a new Pac-10 record. Very potent offense this year. Bryant met at the line of scrimmage and driven down a two-yard loss. Dan Weber there to make the tackle for Washington State. Well, Lee Tillman helped set up that play. He penetrated in the backfield, didn't give Bryant any, anywhere to go. He tried to cut back and that's marked a good running defense. Cougars need to have a big play happen here, whether it's with their defense or the kicking game. They've not been able to force a turnover so far. They haven't had an interception in five games. Second and 12, 13 and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Ball at the 45 yard line. Jones alert set back, here's the draw. Jones, hit by Moton and driven down at the 47. It'll be third and 10. Good job of tackling by Moton this time, who missed one earlier on the touchdown. I'll tell you, this is part of good defense, is running to the football, being in position to make the play, and then actually making the play. Cougar defense played very well the first half, much better than the score indicated. Diggs missed the tackle, and Moton finally drove him down. Brunel will pass. Bailey complete at the 31-yard line of Washington State. Michael Wright drove him out of bounds. Brunel lost his footing just as he planted once again. Well, evidently, he, he might want to slip more often. He's hit every one that he slipped on. Pretty deep coverage by the Cougars' zone defense. They gave him a lot of room, hoping to get for coverage before uh, the ball got there. 22-yard passing gain. Bino Bryant on first down. To the line of scrimmage, no gain on the play. Kurt Newton and a host of other Cougars were there. Washington State has an interception in each of its last five games, but uh, we haven't seen one from their defense today. Newton's second in the Pac-10 in tackles. Sat out last week's game. On second down, Brunel inside the 30. Weber made the tackle for the Cougars. Ron Ricard there as well. Safety blitz by the Cougars there. Moton was coming off the corner. Brunel ran away from it. I don't know if that was design or an audible. But an option's a very good play to run against a blitz because everybody's man-to-man, -man and the run, run support is very soft on the corner. You have somebody playing the quarterback man for man. It's usually a linebacker, and that's a mismatch. James, the dean of top 10 coaches. Matt Jones and Bino Bryant. And it's Bryant with room. Bino inside the 15-yard line. Arm tackles by Ron Ricard and John Diggs prevented him from going to the end zone. And this is this is exactly what happened to the Huskies against UCLA last week. Blitz comes, overrun, big play. Bino runs right past the blitzing linebackers. There's not a lot of good run support. That's just what the UCLA guy did for 88 against the Huskies last week, Keith. 12-yard gain from Bino Bryant. He has 55 yards in today's game, playing in place of Greg Lewis, who's missing his final Apple Cup because of a knee injury. First and 10 from the 14 of Washington State. Brunel rolling, nearly intercepted by Chris Moton. That's a great play by Moton. He suckered Brunel into making that throw. Good pressure by Tillman off the corner. That's excellent defense there. Good discipline. Aaron Pierce, the tight end, was the intended receiver. That's right. He was open when the ball was thrown. And a real nice job by Moton of getting back to the football. 
and Mark Brunel knows how fortunate he was not to have that ball intercepted. It's second and ten now. Well, one more step and it would have been a touchdown too, so it's what makes great plays. Tried to set up the screen to Matt Jones, and it didn't develop. Another great play by Tillman. He was right. He sniffed the screen out and was right there, and Brunel was just forced to throw the ball over the top of him. Incomplete. Good decision by Brunel. This is something that uh, his counterpart for the Cougars has got to do. When there's nothing there, get rid of that football. He has sure grown up a lot in 11 weeks. Well, he has a good supporting cast, but... You know, coming out of high school, he was known as a great competitor. That's a good place to start for your field general. When they're all back next year, Bailey, Turner, Bryant, Brunel, Pierce, McKay. Brunel. Penalty flag flies into the stack. Newton made the tackle. I'm not sure about this, Keith, but somebody came in there with their head. Might have been a late hit or a spear. Face mask. Face mask. Well, third and ten. Cougars are going to hold them, force them into a possible field goal, and now a penalty gives the Huskies another crack at the end zone. There it is right there. Kurt Newton got his hand in the mask. Really no reason Every once in a while, you know, a defensive player will get his hand caught in there or get in a bad position. This is a situation where Newton should have just let go right there. Good call by the officials. <laughs> Ten and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Time running out for Mike Price's Washington State Cougars. If the Huskies score here, take a monumental effort to get back in this game. Well, as Don James said, the, whether that happens or not, the air is going to be filled with footballs. But you know, the, the penalties go into about three categories. There's stupid penalties, there's honest mistakes, and then there's just bad luck. I'm not sure that uh, that was just not a case of a combination of little foolishness and some bad luck. Huskies are still going to be short of the first down after the penalty by inches. So it will be a third down situation. Huskies are going to go in with two tight ends. They bring Mark Kilpack into the game, number 81. Aaron Pierce remains aboard. They are one for one in fourth down conversion so far. They're staring at a third and one play right here. Football is on the four yard line of Washington State. Officials are sorting things out. It appears there uh, they have fourth down up on the the chain gangs marker, and they want to make sure here. Well, this is something that the crew, officiating crew, back in the Missouri Colorado game, wish they had done. Well, it is indeed third down, and they track the plays not only in the press box but in other areas as well. well that's a good job by the officials of making sure. Now the scoreboard's wrong. Brunel for the touchdown. Travis Hansen is on now to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Mark Brunel, who has scored a rushing touchdown in eight consecutive games. Brunel is bidding to become the first Husky quarterback to lead the team in scoring since Bob Schlereth did it in 1959. Hansen boots it to the uprights and Washington has taken a 34 to 3 lead over their cross state rivals at Martin Stadium.
Over the years, we've made a few changes to keep up with the times. But some things about our beer never change, like fresh hops from the Yakima Valley, the Northwest's finest malting barley, and pure water from the mighty Cascade Range, which is why around here, it's Rainier. We've placed these two similar 4x4s in this swamp to see if there's any real difference. Sure, they both have plenty of luggage space, room for five, but only the Isuzu Trooper has auto-locking hubs, so you don't have to get out to get in to four-wheel drive. So, combined with its very low price, we see that only the Trooper won't cost you an arm and a leg. The Isuzu Trooper at just $13,699. There's no comparison. Now, factory dealer incentives could save you up to $2,000 on a Trooper during Isuzu's bottom line sale. Coming November 27th. That certainly is a familiar scene. I was at my best when I was with you people. And how much sex, fun, friendship, one man take? Come on, come on. The Big Chill, coming Tuesday, November 27th. I can't wait till my next party. Jacqueline Bissett, Delta Burke, Joe and McCraney, and Surface are all going to be here on the next Arsenio Hall Show. Monday night at 10. Right here, we see that the these two people are responsible for the quarterback on the option, and Brunel is just too fast. This man's got to come up on the pitch. This is one of the great things about the option, particularly in short yardage goal line situations. Linebacker sucked in on the inside fake. Brunel's got the speed to get it outside. Huskies could really be a dangerous, uh, they, I mean, they are a dangerous team, but they could be a dominating effect if they were an option team. Adds a real nice element to that offense. Jason Hansen's extra point broke the Husky school record for most points in a season. They've surpassed the 1986 mark. 1986 team scored 372 points. Huskies have now scored 373 in 1990. Most prolific scoring club in Husky football history. Hansen, or rather, uh, Channing Wiles showing that he belongs in the same category of kickoffs as the, the Hanson brothers. Well, he's quite a competitor, too. He asked for a chance at the kickoff job, and uh, week after week, did a fine job. He's had a chance to kick off a lot today. Another Husky scoring summary. The key play is Bailey's 27-yard reception on third down. Well, the difference between the team that's scoring touchdowns and those that are not, they're running the football, able to do so. First and 10 Cougars, their own 20. Swinton out to the 25-yard line. David Hoffman made the tackle. Nice job by Swinton. Cook got his hands at him at the, on the line of scrimmage, but he broke free. You know, one of the things about this passing-oriented offense, you spread the field and you do create running seams. Cougars very reluctant to run plays, running plays back-to-back. Second and five. Bledsoe will pass. Here comes the pressure. Steve Itman is there first. And down goes Bledsoe back at the five-yard line. Steve Entman from Cheney. Look, right here you can see there's going to be a fake. Swin's going to be wide open right there. But he is not a... Uh, primary receiver therefore Blitzo's not looking for him but if he'd had a chance to set his feet you can see Swinton's wide open a 20 yard loss on the play as Entman sacks Bledsoe so it's third and 25 now for the Cougar six yard line <laughs> Bledsoe to Philip Bobo out across the 30 and that's a Cougar first down. Shane Palcoa made the tackle. There's a big play from the Cougar offense. Well, that's, uh, those kind of plays on third down have been few and far between this season. Cougar offense is last in the Pac-10 in third down conversions. At halftime, they were two for six. This is a nice throw by Bledsoe right through two defenders. Good job by Bobo. You know, if... if if they're getting blown out of here, you couldn't tell it by the way that Bledsoe and Bobo are performing. They're, they're really competing. 
That's a 24-yard gain. And there is an injured Cougar in the end zone right now, being tended to by Mark Smaha and the Bob Cougar Garman. training staff. Bob Garman, the right tackle. Garman, redshirt junior from Bremerton's Olympic High School. Honorable mention, all Pac-10 a year ago. And while they tend to Garmin, as Coach Mike Price comes onto the field, we're going to pause for these messages. 8.50 to play, third period. Huskies with a 31-point uh, lead, and you're watching Apple Cup 90. When I was in college, I lived over a bakery. I could have majored in sourdough bread. I'd open the window, that smell would come wafting in, and I'd be a goner. Now, Jack in the Box has taken a burger and put it on golden grilled sourdough bread. Time for a little homework. Sourdough makes the burger. The grilled sourdough burger at Jack in the Box. For exciting new taste, this is the place. I love this subject. If you're not on the Horizon Shuttle, think of what you're missing. With flights every half hour between Seattle and Portland, you're never late for a Horizon Shuttle. Just a little early for the next. Kmart has changed a lot right, since we opened our first going? store 27 years ago. But nothing we have ever done compares to the changes we're making now. We're changing the way Kmart looks, feels, and acts. With more brand names, new store designs, and improved service. What about cosmetics? We understand you want to feel good about where you shop. Good. I think that's great. So we're doing everything it takes to make you love your new Kmart. Bob Garman has uh, been removed from the field. They're tending to him. That's the Husky sideline still very focused as they've been all season. No backs on first down. Bobo, the intended receiver, incomplete pass. That'll create a second down situation. Hoffman on the blitz there, forced a quick throw. Cougars running the right kind of pattern against that, but if you look around, no one's really open. That's the great advantage the Huskies have. They have so many people who are big and rangy and can run with anybody. They have the advantage the Cougars don't. They can get pressure. They can blitz and still be pretty effective covering people downfield. Garmin's back up and walking around. You see him there, number 74. Watch to see if he returns soon. Swinton in motion. Here comes Entman again. Bledsoe, incomplete. Trying to throw to Philip Bobo, and a penalty flag goes down. Well, they're lucky that ball was not thrown. That's one thing you don't like to see, a quarterback running to his right, throwing across his body, across the field. He's very fortunate this ball was not picked off. It's the kind of thing that you... A freshman quarterback will do. Hopefully, by the time he gets a little bit uh, more maturity, he will not make this kind of throw. Pass interference to call against Washington. You can see Hoffman's coming on the blitz again. Cook just misses him. And here's a throw. This takes a long time to get there, and you see it is interference. Had the Husky seen played the ball, not the man, he probably would have picked it off. That'll move the ball out to the 36-yard line. Those are the kinds of things that a quarterback can find himself doing when you're way behind. You're trying to, so desperately to make things happen, you don't use good judgment. First down from the 36-yard line after the pass interference call. Bledsoe complete. It's Ron Young out at the 48-yard line. First Young, catch of the senior night. from San Diego, Eric Risco made the tackle. First catch of the night for Young. Young. Another first down and a gain of 12 yards on the play. Cougars have a bit of a drive going here. It began back at their own 20. They faced a third and 25 situation at one point. 
Swinton on play action, and there's John Cook. And Chico Fraley, and Steve Entman, and a host of white shirts. Second sack of the night for Fraley. He just widened on that formation and came. You can see this is about the fourth time the Cougars have run this play action fake. They have yet to hand the ball off. So I'm not sure they're getting a great deal out of the run fake. Looks to me if he had handed the ball off, there's, a, there's some kind of running lane there. Very difficult to block four men coming off the side with three blockers. Chico Fraley, 10 tackles for loss coming into this game. He's having a fine day for the Washington Huskies. On second and 17, Bledsoe airmails it. Bob Garman has returned to the lineup. He is playing with a sprained right knee. Has a mix up there. Griggs thought it was an outside breaking route. And Bledsoe thought it was going to run it deep. There's, there, this shows you a little bit of the, the life of a quarterback in the Pac-10. Just because the ball's gone doesn't mean that you're not going to take a little bit of abuse. Huskies, good pressure. Entman right there. Boy, Entman's having an all-conference kind of year, isn't he? Uh, he's, he's like a freight train. Third and 17 now. Cougars forced to put it up. Complete Calvin Griggs, the intended receiver. Charles Mincy was in his back pocket. Well, this is very similar to the other play. They've hurt the Huskies in a deep zone. As you can see right here, he's going to come down, break right in here, but the defensive back does a nice job of breaking on the ball. It's just in the air too long. Breaks up the play. Nice job of coming back to the football by the defense. Charles Mincy, Dean O'Brien standing back at his own 20 yard line on fourth and 17. Jason Hansen on to kick, the Huskies bring the ball and they get Jason Hansen. And this one's gonna come back, the Cougars will keep the football. Well that's the first mistake I've seen the Huskies make. Jason's probably lucky that uh, he didn't get that block. They had Five guys in there. We'll see who committed the infraction. I believe Mark DeGrasse was the first one who got in there. Well, about three of them committed the infraction since they didn't get a hand on the ball. Hanson, leading punter in the conference. Didn't look like he was in a rush there either, Keith. Well, maybe that's a way to pick up a first down. He's willing to give up his body to do it. As I said, that's really the first serious error the Huskies have committed all day. Roughing the kicker. And Washington State will move into Husky territory for the first time in the second half. Well, that's an example of where a, a, a penalty is not a... You know, they came very close to blocking that kick. Mm -hmm. First and ten from the Husky... 43 yard line now with seven minutes to play in the third quarter. Washington leading 34 to three. Swinton wrapped up and dropped. Travis Richardson's having an outstanding game as well. A Husky co-captain from Timberline High in Olympia. He's done a great job all season, Keith. He's had a back problem and those kinds, those are the kinds of things that are gonna bother you the whole season through. He's played very well. I'll tell you, he's, a, he's quite a leader for that defensive front. I think he's had a nice, Nice effect on the play of Entman, too. Three-yard loss on the play. It'll be second and 13 from the 46 now of Washington. Swinton and Carr in the backfield. Let's go to pass. Complete. And out of bounds goes Clarence Williams. Chico Fraley escorted him out. Clarence Williams, the son of Clancy, the former Cougar All-America, for the second reception today. Okay, you can see the tight end comes down here, and he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Williams is a big play tight end for the Cougars, averaging 14 yards of completion. That's a big average for a tight end. One-on-one -on -one with a the linebacker there. There's the lucky it's not a touchdown. 
25 yard passing game for the Cougars, first and 10 from the Husky 21. Well, Hoffman caused the fumble. Washington recovers. Chico Fraley in the bottom of the sack. And the Cougar drive is stalled. Well, the Cougars jumped into their formation with no backs in the backfield, which gives nobody any help up front blocking. You can see the Husky defensive line just coming like a big old wave. Hoffman on the blitz. Hits Bledsoe up there by the rib cage, and the ball comes loose. That's a sixth sack by the Huskies so far. And they take over first and 10 at the Husky 29. Newton and Lurcher in on the stop for Washington State. Bean O'Brien, the ball carrier. Do you know about the Cougars there on the 25 yard line there they have not been in that formation at all the whole drive and then suddenly they jump into it something bad happens and the drive stops Bryant with 13 carries now for 57 yards in the game and you can see the disgust in Mike Price's face and certainly in his heart second and eight now for the 31 option game it's Bryant Popped at the corner by Diggs. Spurts away for another couple of yards. Kurt Newton finally brought him down at the 34. A gain of three on the play. So it'll be third and five now for the Huskies. Who have a 31-point lead here in the third period. Huskies four for nine. In third down conversions tonight. Four. Blitz coming. Knocked down and intercepted. Oh, incomplete. Nearly intercepted. That was quite a play from Rod Plummer. Good pressure by the Cougars. A little bad luck that they didn't get this ball here. You see Brunel gets it knocked around. He doesn't know where it is. Bounces off of his back. Great effort by Plummer. Deflected the football and still came around the other side of Brunel, almost in position to recover the football. Cougar defense is still playing real hard. Channing Wiles on to punt for the Cougars. And John Biggs is standing back at his own 25 yard line. Wiles with a good kick. Diggs will let this one go, and it'll fall into the end zone. 65-yard punt from Channing Wiles. Huskies with a 31-point lead, 440 to play, third period. When you least expect it, things can go wrong. Putting your home and property at risk. With Pemco Insurance, help always is just a phone call away. Most companies can't handle claims after hours or on weekends, but Pemco's representatives can take your claim 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To find out more about Pemco's help when you need it service, call us toll free from anywhere in Washington. Pemco Insurance. We're with you all the way. How do you keep that long drive from taking an unexpected turn? Who can make the difference between just a trip and a vacation? Where do you go when Rover turns your picnic into his snack?
Tomorrow night on Fox, it all begins with True Colors at 7 o'clock, followed by Parker Lewis Can't Lose, and then the Emmy Award winning In Living Color at 8 o'clock, followed by Get a Life with Chris Elliott, who learns house sitting isn't his forte. And then at 9, it's Married with Children, Peg Bundy in overdrive to a rocket truck trying a 150-foot jump. That ought to be interesting. In between, you'll see Howie Mandel coming face-to-face -face with reality. It's Married with Children, Good Grief, for the world's greatest stunts. Tomorrow night on Fox. First and 10 for the Cougars from their own 20-yard line. 440 to play, third quarter. Heavy pressure again on Bledsoe. He'll run. Steps out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Chico Fraley there, as well as Dave Hoffman, a gain of four on the play. It'll be second and six. Chico Fraley's having a fine game, Ken Woody. He sure is. He's got a lot of speed. Probably the kind of person that could be a large defensive back. He's always around the football. Great enthusiasm for the game. You know, Don James talked to at halftime about keeping the Cougars in negative yardage situations. Here's an example. They're second and six, and they, they can run or pass and keep this drive going. Let's see what they do. They have Carr and Swinton in the backfield. This is Swinton, and he's met immediately by David Hoffman. The Husky defense showing its superiority. Loss of 10 on the play. Hoffman on the blitz makes the big play. Nobody's blocking him. He's not fooled at all, and that's, that's good defense. There's another angle on the play. That's just an example of the Husky defense guessing right, Cougars guessing wrong. Cougar pardon, a loss of four on the play, which creates a third and 10 situation for the Cougars. Bledsoe going upstairs. Incomplete and pass interference will be called on Charles Mincy, and he doesn't like that call at all. Calvin Griggs was the intended receiver for Washington State. The Griggs had a step on Mincy. They just couldn't get away from him. And I don't know, it's real difficult to tell that there's uh, pass interference, and we get a chance to watch a replay here. You watch Mincy will just reach over the shoulder of Greg's. Uh, I, I'm not sure that defense that official was in position to make that call, Keith. That looked like a good defensive play. And that's the second time that the Hus uh, Cougars have benefited from a Husky pass interference penalty in as many drives. Well, those old running game coaches used to say that whenever you throw three bad things can happen. Actually, you throw enough, some good things will happen too. That's the second questionable pass interference penalty on the Huskies so far. Cougars are moving the ball in the last quarter and a half. They're moving the ball pretty well between the 30 yard and the 20s, but uh, just can't get it into the end zone. Ball at the 35 yard line of Washington State, first and 10. Huskies have six penalties in this game, 59 yards. And the flags are going again, and Bob Garman is involved in another scuffle. Donald Jones and Bob Garman are going at it. Penalty flags are down. Paul Carr got in there. This time, the benches remain on their sidelines. Don James was out to the hash mark to try to calm things down. You don't often see Don James take the field. Well, and he was out there to keep the Huskies on the bench where they belong. You can see on the right side here, there's movement. It's going to be a penalty. I'm not sure that it wouldn't have been on the Huskies anyway. So that's the situation. It's going to be offsides on the Huskies, and now the Cougars retaliate. That advantage they had will now be offset. And in that situation, the Cougars will end up with a net minus 10 because it's a five-yard offside penalty and a 15-yard personal no foul. Question, no question. You might say, hey, Bob, they're going to penalize the guy who hit you. There's no need to push him back. Well, these are the kinds of things that happen in rivalry games. You know, tensions are 
run very high, and I'm sure the Cougars are very, very frustrated right now. Well, you, quite frankly, you'd expect a bit more leadership out of a guy like Bob Garman, who is a junior on a team that's right now filled with freshmen. Very, very true. They called offsetting personal foul penalties, and Don James can't believe it. Matter of fact, he threw the flag back out towards the official. I think that's a cop out. Well, I, I really do too. I, you know, it's a little bit like a, a hockey game or one of those things in basketball where they jostle and they call fouls on both people and uh, everything goes on. And right now, Washington State should be five or ten yards back rather than five yards forward. I mean, they gained five yards in a play that they obviously you know, incited, if you will. Well, I'm sure that Don James has given that official uh, a little bit of helpful advice. Might pull out a rule book. He helped write a lot of them. Mike Price's team looks at a first and five situation now. Ball on the 40-yard line. Bledsoe upstairs. Incomplete. Briscoe with coverage. And Ken, it's been a long time since Washington State has run the football. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, they, they keep getting themselves in a kind of a negative situation. Here, it's second and five. They still could run the football. You know, first and five, run it two, three times to get a first down. They need to get some first downs. Whether they score or not is not so important as taking some time off the clock and giving their defense a break. This offense has continually put their defense in bad position all year round and several times tonight. Second and five now. Swinton and Carr in the backfield. Here comes the pressure. Penalty flag down. Intercepted. Charles Mincy driven down by Philip Bobo. Penalty flag is down in the play. It's likely a hold given the vicinity it was thrown within. And so the Huskies will likely take over here on the interception. Drew Bledsoe is injured. He is limping off of the field now. Washington State thin at depth at that position. You can see he got the, the ankle twisted. Jaime Fields was in to make the tackle from his linebacker spot. Just Here's the situation. The quarterback's going to drop back here, not see anybody, and he's either got to get up the field or get rid of the football. He's been doing this far too many times tonight, and this time it comes, comes back to haunt him. There's nobody open. He's going to just throw the ball late, up for grabs, to avoid the sack. Easy interception. Here's Bino Bryant on the option to the 30-yard line for a gain of one. From a depth standpoint, Washington State has one quarterback. Remember, Aaron Garcia was suspended for a game earlier this week for a violation of team rules. So Darren Burchak, a junior from Cleelum, a walk-on who played a year at Boise State, is the only depth that Washington State has. Now, Mike Price has said he wouldn't hesitate at all to put Burchak in the game, but you know he doesn't want to do that. Well, we saw him in practice on Tuesday, and he looked a little rusty, so. Second and nine now. Brunel for Bailey, incomplete. And Husky fans want a penalty flag for pass interference there. Well, that was a good play by Wright. That's very similar to the one that Mincy had on the sideline that was called interference. It'll be third and nine. Good coverage by the Cougars. Brings up a third down. Brunel has gone without a completion in his last five attempts. There is Drew Bledsoe. They're not exactly certain what his injury is, but we assume it's a twisted ankle. And we are not as yet certain of his status for the remainder of this game. We'll try to get that word to you. Third and nine. Brunel escapes a tackle and is down to the 26-yard line. Jerron Woodley made the stop for Washington State. There is Darren Burchick. Should also mention the Cougars have Mike Pattons in the fine player from Moscow, Idaho, but uh, he is redshirting this year.
Fourth and six now, and Travis Hansen has come on for Washington. He will attempt a 43-yard field goal out of the hole to Mark Brunel. Bad snap. Brunel will throw, or at least try to. Brunel driven out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Chris Moton was there to escort him to the sideline. Kurt Lurcher is limping for Washington State now on his way back to the Cougar sideline. And Mark Brunel getting an earful from Jeff Woodruff. But he did the wise thing there. He didn't throw the ball up for grabs where it could have turned into something disastrous. Sure, that was the right idea. You know, he's he's got the speed to outrun these people. Very good job on the outside, on the right-hand side of keeping contained by the Cougars. Lurcher was there. He does not make the tackle, but he strings it out long enough that Moton can get over there, and he puts a pretty good hit on him. Newton right there as well. The snap from Mark Kilpack appeared to be a bit high and inside if you're a It's not been a good night player. for snappers. Minute 36 to play, third quarter. First and 10 Cougars from the 26 of Washington State. Bledsoe back in the game. Throws behind his intended receiver, Calvin Griggs. Didn't appear to have any problem with that ankle as he stepped back to plant the, uh, no, plant he to the pass. I'm sure that you're going to have to be really hurt to drag Drew Bledsoe off the field right now. You know, if, if you want to give a freshman a baptism of fire, this the last part of the season has been one for Drew. I think he's learned a lot of things about when to throw, when not to throw. He's got to get the ball off earlier. And he's learning a little bit about how to face, face adversity tonight. On second and 10. Going long, looking for Philip Bobo. And Bobo knocks the ball down. Well played by Dana Hall, the outstanding right cornerback, the junior from Diamond Bar, California. That ball went about 55 yards in the air. Well, the Husky secondary has matured so much during the 1990 season. That's right. They, uh, they, you know, I can't remember many times with uh, receivers wide open against anybody they've played. Tonight, they've been in the ear hole of all those Cougar receivers all night long. Third and ten. From the 26. Williams for a first down and much more. Williams driven out of bounds at the 40-yard line by David Hoffman. Thirty-two yard gain on the play. Great play by Williams. You're gonna see him come across the field. He's become the Cougars' most consistent receiver from this was a, a quick pattern across situation. The, quick pattern across the field designed to beat the blitz. It's the kind of things you got to do to get rid of the ball quickly, give your quarterback a chance. William six in the Pac-10 in receptions this year. On first down from the 40, it's Swinton on the ground and out to the 39. And Dana Hall brought him down, and perhaps that's why we haven't seen the Cougars running the football much tonight. The Huskies just don't give up very many yards. They're ranked second in the country. They're ranked first in the Pac-10, surrendering 74.6 yards a game. For those of you little leaguers at home who saw that play, you watch this replay, you watch Dana Hall. This is how to tackle. This is great tackling technique by a fine athlete. Hits him, stands him up, open field tackle, gets his hands all the way around him and brings him down. A great tackle. Second and nine, Bobo over the middle, down to the 15-yard line, and a penalty flag goes down. Drew Bledsoe and Mike Lustick are uh, having a few words with one another. The Cougars are inside the Husky 20-yard line. It's roughing. I think it was on Lustig. Roughing the passer.
Cougars are hurting them with crossing routes now. Bobo across the middle. Ball's delivered very quickly. Again, Huskies are on a blitz. Nice move to turn the ball around. And now, you know, the Cougars are beginning to move it now as they start throwing the ball quickly instead of those deep routes. Philip Bobo having his calves attended to. He might just uh, have a Charlie horse or something in this cold weather. Let's hope that's all it is. 25-yard passing gain of the play. Bobo has six receptions in this game for 125 yards. Now there's Mike Lustig, the young man who mixed it up with Drew Bledsoe at the end of the last play. First and goal to spot the ball at the eight-yard line after the penalty. Bledsoe down to the six. William Doctor made the tackle. Good job by Bledsoe there. Everyone was covered, so he got it up the field and actually made some yards. Very important at this stage to get that ball in the end zone. You know, there's still a whole quarter to play, Keith. After the 30-minute uh, delay of the start of this game and the, uh, the passing that we've seen, we could be here until tomorrow. Well, I understand my daughter is going to graduate uh, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> I hope to be there. This will be the final play of the first quarter. First time the Cougars have gained yardage in the last eight rushing plays. Ball ball incomplete. And that's the end of the third quarter of play here at Martin Stadium in Pullman. The Washington Huskies added to their 27-3 halftime lead with a touchdown pass from Mark Brunel. Actually, a touchdown run from Brunel. We'll be back in just a moment. If money were no object, what would you want in a car? Guts. Muscle. Just looks beautiful. You know, uh... Slick. Sleek. Something a little bit different. Four doors. I can't fly. Luxury. Style. All the comforts of home. Everything. Well, money is an object, which is why we created the all-new Nissan Sentra, recently selected by Road & Track as the best sedan under $10,000. Nissan. It's more than a car. It's an attitude. Right. What would you say if Pizza Hut served up fully loaded Supreme Pizzas for the never-before-low price of just $6.99 each? Oh, baby, that's what I like! It's the Holiday Feast deal. Get up to five Supreme Pizzas each for just $6.99. Oh, baby, that's what I like! The Supreme Pizza with six of your favorite toppings at a price you're really gonna like. So this holiday season, hurry into Pizza Hut for the deal that's got everyone saying. Oh, baby, that's what I like! Apple Cup 90 is brought to you by Chevron Supreme with Tecrolene. By Jack in the Box Restaurant. For exciting new taste, this is the place. By Pizza Hut, making it great. By Seafirst Bank, we make it easy for you. By King County Medical Blue Shield, providers of health care coverage for over 50 years. And by Mazda, it just feels right. Husky Stadium, 1985. Mark Rippon fired three touchdown passes to help Washington State to a 21-20 victory over Washington on a cold, frozen track in Seattle. That may well have been the coldest day in the history of college football. I'm not sure. It, was a, it certainly ranks right up there with the lowest. Mark Rippon uh, activated and starting once again for the Washington Redskins. You know, it's amazing, Keith, that last play. Bledsoe had his most wide-open receiver of the day and threw it over his head. We're set to begin the fourth quarter of play here at Martin Stadium in Pullman with Washington leading Washington State 34-13. Keith Chipman along with Ken Woody. We're pleased you've joined us for the 1990 Apple Cup game. Third and seven. Third and goal from the seventh. Bledsoe chased out to the end zone, incomplete, looking for Bobo again. Shane Palkoa providing coverage. How he gets away from pressure is kind of a mystery here. Husky's just unable to wrap him up. Good job of staying alive. 
Cougars bait the fourth down here. They don't need three, they need seven, and Bledsoe's going to remain in the game. Well, they do only have three. You just momentarily uh, gave them 13 a second ago there, Keith. I'm sorry? You said 34 to 13. Oh, I did. Beg your pardon. On fourth and goal. Complete. Shane Palkoa. Well, the Huskies have the most efficient pass defense in the conference, and they show you why here. Whenever that ball comes to a receiver, there's a pile of Huskies around it. Really, three straight shots into the end zone, and no one. That second play, somebody was open, but the ball was overthrown. Great defense by the Huskies. Shane Palcola is having a fine day defensively for the Huskies, too. Playing in place of Tommy Smith at that free safety spot. The sophomore from Marysville's Pilchuck High. And he was good enough early on to be considered a possible starter at free safety. Bino Bryant carrying a few Cougars with him. Kurt Lurcher and John Diggs. Diggs is back in the ball game after being examined for a concussion. Eight yard gain for Bryant. It's second and two. The Washington 15 yard line. Matt Jones and Bryant in the backfield once again. Matt Jones out across the 20 yard line for the first down. Rod Plummer, the first Cougar there. Well, the Huskies will probably show their ball control running offense uh, to the Cougars, see if they can pound it out, get a little clock, catch the charger on time. Cougar defense has not played badly tonight. First and 10, ball to 21. Here's Bryant to the 35-yard line. And another Husky first down. Ron Ricard with a tackle. 14-yard gain from Bino Bryant. Here's a replay. You can see uh, ball given to Bino Bryant. He's got excellent vision. Gets the ball on the outside hand away from the tacklers. Only a last, last gas tackle by Ricard keeps him from going the distance. Bryant, 17 carries for 84 yards now. Brunel, complete. Mario Bailey with a reception for Washington to the 49 of Washington State. Kurt Lurcher finally brought him just, down. Just a quick little stop pattern there, and that's outstanding for a player with the running ability of Bailey. Get him the ball quickly. Let him see if he can break a tackle one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback. Mario Bailey's cousin, Victor Greer, played football here at Washington State for a year. Calls him his, uh, his brother. He's a uh, grew up with uh, Victor Greer and he came to school over here. Wanted Mario to go to school at Washington State, but decided Huskyville was the best place for him. Great tackle by Kurt Newton there on Bailey. Cougar defense still hitting. There's Mario, who has had an outstanding season. He's gone over the 1,000 yard mark in career receiving yards. Very durable player for 157 pounds. Penalty flags. See, Mark Brunell is just as disgusted with things that break down as his head coach is. The Cougars are called for the offsides here. He's upset because they don't get a chance to run that play. Probably thought they're going to make more than five yards.
Second and four now. Matt Jones for the first down, still on his feet inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. John Diggs and Chris Moton make the tackle. Matt Jones is running hard tonight as well. Young man from Portland Central Catholic High School. Huskies have a lot of depth at running back, fullback. They got two outstanding fullbacks, guys that can block and hit the hole quickly. Got a lot of guys named Jones on this team too, Keith. And they can all play. Matt Jones, Mark Jones, Donald Jones. First and 10. Ball at the 33 yard line now. Here's Dino Bryant. Down to the 31. Chris Moton is down. Moton playing in his final game as a Cougar. He's had quite a career. Last name, last year named to the all-conference academic team. It's quite an honor. He's one of the senior class that was recruited by the Jim Walden coaching staff. One of nine players remaining from that club. Last year you coached at Washington State as well. Yes, and when Chris came in, he was a very aggressive, punishing tackler. You know, he's, he's been kind of in a difficult situation. He's, he's not quite big enough to be a linebacker, and he's not quite fast enough to be a great defensive back. The Cougars have had to kind of move him around several positions in his career. He's going to uh, do a student teaching at Lewis Clark High School in Spokane this coming winter. And he says he's going to student teach only. He's not going to coach a thing. He wants to get away from athletics for a while. There's Husky head coach Don James. And we'll uh, have an opportunity to visit with the head coach of the Huskies tomorrow morning on Husky Highlights with Don James. We'll take your calls to the head coach and review the Apple Cup game. Tomorrow morning at 10 on KCPQ 13 Fox. Those of you in Eastern Washington, it's on the air at 11 p.m. on KAYU Fox 28. Moton back to his feet, but not putting much pressure if any on that left knee Huskies will break the huddle and look at a second and eight situation now at the 31 yard line of Washington State leading 34 to 3 with 12 minutes to play the Cougar depth has been attacked by injury this year by academic casualty they have had a, a horrendous year in terms of depth the Huskies on the other hand, they've had a great year. Bino Bryant, John Diggs tripped him up, and as Don James said, when, when you're winning, trainers aren't as busy. That's right, you know, everybody wants to be healthy, and hopefully uh, Tommy Smith uh, withstanding, you know, everybody wants to be eligible so they can experience all those things. Smith will be back for the Rose Bowl. It was a one-game suspension. Shane Palcola has played very well in his absence tonight. When you look at a, a guy like Jaime Fields, too, defensively for the Huskies, who uh, was injured early in the season, and it's tough for him to get back in the lineup now as Brett Collins is having a career year. First and ten for the Huskies. Pino Bryant. John Diggs with the tackle for Washington State. And Bryant is just churning out yards for the Huskies. He has just reached the 100-yard mark. Well, the Cougar, de Cougar defense is starting to get worn down a little bit here. You can tell they're just not getting off blocks as they were in the first half, and Diggs has to make the play again. If he doesn't, Bryant's going to end up in the end zone. Huskies beginning to show their dominance up front on the offensive side of the football. Bryant Ripped up at the eight-yard line, Michael Wright, John Diggs for Washington State. We've said their name a lot today as that Husky offensive line has just been making huge holes. 
for their backs to run through. Well, they're making huge holes, but people are the linebackers are getting picked off. You see McClanahan steps up and gets sucked in. They're, they're, it's as if they're playing without linebackers. The defensive backs are having to make all the tackles. Those are all going to be gains downfield by the time they catch up to the ball carrier. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Kurt Newton made the tackle. And Matt Jones was the ball carrier. Bryant has gained 41 yards on this drive. I think he's answered a few of those questions about the importance of Greg Lewis in the lineup. Certainly Lewis is very important, but Gino Bryant is playing real hard for him, and he wears the armband today to salute Greg. Bryant inside the five. Boy, there's bound to be a traffic jam at Snoqualmie Pass right now because this place is clearing out and has been for about the last hour. A lot of the Cougar students look like they've headed home for Thanksgiving a little bit earlier than they hope to. And I think that the security people are probably the only people in the building that are happy with it. You see here's a Chris Moton is obviously very distraught about his injury. It's the last game of his career. He is so, uh, Mike, Mike Smith, Smith, offensive player. It's good to have friends in situations like that. No time with a twisted net or left knee, he will not be back. Brunel to the end zone. Aaron Pierce for the touchdown. It becomes almost methodical for Washington's yes. offense. They have done it all year. And they have reached the 40-point mark once again. They've averaged 40 points and 400 yards in conference play. There's going to be offensive holding right here. You watch Kirkland pull out. And he has a, grabbed a hold of the outside linebacker of the Cougars. Get a chance to see him. He is... Travis Hansen adds the extra point for Washington. And the Huskies have built their lead to 38 points. 8.40 to play in the ball game. Please join us for Apple Cup 90 from Martin Stadium in Pullman. Over the years, we've made a few changes to keep up with the times. But some things about our beer never change like fresh hops from the Yakima Valley, the Northwest's finest malting barley, and pure water from the mighty Cascade Range, which is why around here, it's Rainier. Every now and then, a car comes along that makes you believe in love at first sight. A car like the 1991 Thunderbird. You love the way it looks, you love the way it feels, and you love the way it drives. This Thunderbird is surprisingly affordable. And you get automatic air conditioning, AM, FM, power seat, power windows, and with a new V8 engine, power, where it counts most. Next on the West, why is the government spending millions of your tax dollars to mothball these rusty ships? Also, we'll take you to a hospital that never issues a bill for its services, and a deadly new disease is blowing across the West on the next edition of The West. Sunday night at 6.30. The KCPQ Kids Club invites you to spend an afternoon with Disney and Dumbo. Wild Johnny Flying Elephant! Beginning Sunday at 4 on KCPQ 13. Here's a re replay of the touchdown. Rennell now is 8 for 16, 139 yards. Two passing touchdowns, one rushing. Dean Kirkland did get his hands on the outside linebacker there. You couldn't see it too well there, but no matter. Pierce is wide open, and that's his second touchdown of the game, too. Junior tight end from Franklin High School. Having a fine day for Washington. That's a nice catch from Aaron Pierce. Here's Channing Wiles to kick it off. He's been busy today. 41-3 to the score. Salter and Pryor. Can't find the football. 
The ball will be down at the one-yard line. Jamal Fontaine was in there to make the play. Rodney Scott eventually recovered the football. Not too good a judgment by Salter there. He was out of control. Misjudged the football. And he couldn't find it. Lucky there wasn't a blown knee right there. Mark DeGrasse along with Jamal Fontaine. Huskies are not letting up, that's for sure. First and ten, the ball's on the one-yard line. Perhaps back to the line of scrimmage, if that, for Paul Carr. I'm not sure there's been about four or five situations uh, this, this night where the Cougars have started inside their five-yard line. Bledsoe must be getting tired of looking over his shoulder and seeing the Cougar emblem in the end zone behind him. Well, they tried to use the shotgun early in the game, Ken, to buy him some more time, but didn't really seem to solve the problem. This Husky pass rush is most impressive. It is. Second and nine, throwing from his own end zone, incomplete. Ron Young was the intended receiver. Cougar offense has 2,455 yards this year. That'll be the coming into today's game. This will be the lowest offensive output by a Cougar football team since 1982 when they gained 3,593 yards. And this will be the eighth game in an 11 game season where they rush for under 100 yards. And that's, you know, that's pathetic. Even in that 82 season, the Cougars led the Pac-10 conference in rushing. It's been a long year. Third and nine. Intercepted, William Doctor. Down to the six yard line. The Huskies had intercepted a pass in each of the past three Apple Cups that had gone for touchdowns and William Doctor smelled one there but he was driven out of bounds before he got to the end zone. Here's a replay. Bledsoe's looking at first for his tight end, comes across. Young just didn't come back to the football as much as uh, the Husky did. William Doctor's second interception of the year. Well, that's one thing, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm st so impressed by it tonight. When that ball's in the air, the Huskies are flying to the football. Billy Joe Holbert is coming at quarterback for the Washington Huskies now. He'll be joined by Leif Johnson in the backfield and Jay Barry. As Don James has put the second unit in. Johnson inside the five-yard line. Malik Roberson made the tackle. So now you've got Adam Cooney, Chris Rongan, Jim Neville, and Pete Caligas, Lincoln Kennedy all in the lineup. Two freshmen, two juniors amongst that group. The Huskies uh, stable is very well stocked for the years ahead, Keith. from the four. Jay Berry down to the one yard line. Kurt Newton made the tackle. Billy Joe Hobart from Tuala High School. Highly recruited player. A couple of years ago, has patiently been waiting in the wings. Mop-up duty most of the season as Mark Brunell has guided the Huskies to what will be their ninth victory of the season. Jay Berry for the touchdown. Boy, they make it look easy, don't they, Ken? Yes, they do. Of course, it helps when you start to drive on about the inside the 10-yard line. Doesn't put very much pressure on your offense. 
Nice effort by Newton here, trying to go over. You know, he's selling himself out, trying to make the play. Big hole. And the way the Cougar luck is, that's probably the hole that Newton was supposed to be in. Jay Berry. Barry's father, Odell Barry, played for the Denver Broncos. Hanson kicks the extra point, and Washington has built its lead to 45 points with 6.13 to play. You're watching Apple Cup 90. I'm used everywhere, man, I'm used everywhere. Across the desert fair, man, up in the mountain air. People all declare, man, I'm used everywhere. I'm used in Brighton, Clarkson, Stapleton, Tullowitz, the Pendleton, Madison, Denison, Alamo, the Hot Springs, Brock Springs, Soda Springs, Pocatilla, Fargo, Pueblo, Provo, Walla Walla, Sioux City, Rapid City, Junction City, Moose Lake, Greater Lake, Devil's Lake, Salt Lake, for Pete's sake, I'm used everywhere. It's the one that gets used, U.S. West Direct. Last year, Jack Helm had two heart attacks in one afternoon. And this is what the cure looked like. There was no surgery, no anesthesia. Instead, a tiny balloon was inflated inside his heart to open up a blocked artery. It was painless, but the $20,000 it cost wasn't. At King County Medical, we'd like you to think about that. Because while the cost of health care may seem a little hard to take, according to people like Jack Hellman, it certainly beats the alternative. Life, take one. Take a bird. Dad. I do. You only get one take in life. Take Sony Handycam, the world's smallest camcorders for life's biggest moments. There's the Washington Husky sideline. They'll board a charter from Lewiston and make the 39-minute flight back to Seattle after the game is complete. And it'll be a, a happy flight. The Huskies will defeat their cross-state rival for the second straight year. It's 48 to three right now. Six minutes, 13 seconds left to play after Jay Berry scored from a yard away. Notre Dame lost today, 21 to 14 or rather 24 to 21, uh, Penn State, the 18th ranked club in the country, beat the Fighting Irish in South Bend. So Colorado, which beat Kansas State handily today, will move to number one. Miami, Dennis Erickson's club won today as well. They beat Austin College 35 to 12. Cougars will start first and 10 from their own 27-yard line with about six minutes to play in the ball game. Last Saturday, the Huskies and Cougars had a seatbelt challenge, the battle off the field, as the Washington Traffic Safety Commission and the Washington State Safety Restraint Coalition conducted a seatbelt use survey on each campus. Over 13,000 car passengers were surveyed. It appears the best bucklers are Cougar fans. An impressive 73% use their seat belts, followed by the Huskies at 67%. Congratulations to both universities and their fans. On first down, Bledsoe. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Butch Williams. Good effort by Williams to get to a ball that was really uncatchable. Williams is quite an athlete, and as I mentioned before, he's one of the real big play tight ends in the Pac-10. Anybody who can average 14 yards of completion as a tight end is a big play player. Only a sophomore. Bledsoe's gone six straight passes without a reception. Second and ten. Philip Bobo. Very near a first down. One thing about this, the Huskies have harassed and, and really physically dominated Bledsoe, but they have not intimidated him. He's hung in there. Still seems to be very cool and calm. He's made a couple of judgmental errors that you might chalk up to inexperience. Hopefully for the Cougars, they'll work that out, much like Tim Rosenbaugh did his junior year when he was a quarterback. 
19 interceptions. He said that was a great learning experience for him. Well, Drew Bledsoe's had a great learning experience so far tonight. First and 10. Ball at the 38-yard line. Bledsoe going long. Intercepted. Paxton Talele picked off the pass. The junior from Hawaii. Husky fans have reason to celebrate. They've made the long journey to Pullman, and the next long journey they make will be to Pasadena, California for the Rose Bowl. Here's the play action fake to Swinton. Pretty good protection. Quarterback moves around. This is just covering a lot of territory. Receiver appeared to be open when he launched the football. But that's the difference between the uh, defenders in the Walla Walla League and the Pac-10. You see Jim Lambright is already down on the field. The Husky coaches have left the press box. They're down to celebrate. You can see that Billy Joe Holbert's doing a bit of celebrating already. Josh Dunning jumped off sides again. A lot of frustration. You know, if this kind of, if this was a day, Keith, you just say, hey, I'm going to go back to bed and start all over again. This has been one long day for the Cougars all year round. Never, even when they, they won, they never hit on all cylinders. First and five. Jay Barry in the Cougar territory, still on his feet. Jay Barry running hard to the 40-yard line. He has a couple of touchdowns today, and now he has a nice game to go with it. A 20-yard effort by Jay Barry for a first down. Husky's second unit is playing very well right now. David Reiner in his right guard, or rather right tackle. Place of Lincoln Kennedy, who's still bothered by a turf toe. And Holbert just seems to be having fun drawing them offside right now. So it'll be first and five now for the Washington Huskies. Well, for a while there, we thought this was going to be a big game and perhaps a story of the week, but now it just looks like it's Milli Vanilli, huh? Uh, it's <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's amazing. The score is very similar to the Arizona State game, but the quality of the Cougar effort has been so much better tonight. Lake Johnson carried the football on that occasion. Loss of one of the play, it'll be second and six. Very few negative yardage situations for the Huskies tonight, and that's why they are probably the best all-round offense in the Pac-10, the leading rushing offense. Holbert will keep. Holbert to the 20, then bounds at the one-yard line. Billy Joe Hobart. Michael Wright finally drove him out of bounds. 35-yard gain from Billy Joe Hobart. Here's an example of Hobart faking out Malik Robertson, who's got quarterback. That's just a great job by an option quarterback. I'll tell you what, the Huskies remind me of the Cougars back in 82 running the option. I mean that as a compliment. I'm sure they don't get a great deal of practice of that, but those are the kinds of things you spend years trying to teach an option quarterback to do. Johnson and Barry in the backfield. Holbert stopped on the play. They were looking at an option attack as well, and He'll be dropped for a loss of a yard. Not so fast, Billy Joe. They tried the same thing, and Cougars, any best chance of defending an option is to keep your linebackers free and get an extra man outside who can play the quarterback and the pitch. Cougars did a nice job there. Huskies 
scored 54 uh, four points two weeks ago against Arizona which is their highest output of the season touchdown here would give them 55 Jay Barry into the end zone for his third touchdown of the afternoon his second of the quarter It comes with 3.54 to play. <laughs> Cougars guessing wrong here. Thought the play was going to go outside, and then Barry just cuts back inside. Jay Barry, nine carries, 28 yards, and three touchdowns. Travis Hansen splits the uprights once again. And the Washington Huskies have extended their lead to 52 points with 3.54 to play at Martin Stadium in Pullman. To introduce Isuzu's new rodeo, we've placed it and Toyota's 4Runner in this campground to see which is better for family fun. Sure, the rodeo has more horsepower and rear anti-locking brakes, but another key difference is that only the rodeo seats six. So, combined with its price, thousands less than Forerunner, we see that only in a rodeo, no one gets stung. The new Isuzu Rodeo. At just $12,499, there's no comparison. School employees, each day you do something to improve the quality of life in Washington. And since 1936, Washington School Employees Credit Union has been dedicated to improving the quality of your lives. Enjoy high dividends on checking and savings, as well as the state's best loan rates. You can join Washington School Employees Credit Union even if you already belong to another credit union. And once you're a member, your entire family can join too. Just $5 opens an account. Washington School Employees Credit Union. Call us toll-free statewide. Most videos shot with today's small camcorders come out looking shaky like this. Okay. But now, with a push of a button, they come out steady like this. Panasonic introduces the palm quarter, the compact camcorder with the digital image stabilizer. It's small and lightweight, so it fits in the palm of your hand. Yet the palm quarter uses videotapes that can play in any VHS recorder. Brian! The palm quarter from Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Keith Trippin and Ken Woody back at Martin Stadium in Pullman, where Washington has extended its lead to 52 points with 3.54 to play. And this is the most lopsided Husky victory in this series. Well, this game's getting out of hand. Unless the Cougars can generate a little offense, the Huskies are going to get into the 60s. And that would be very unfortunate. You know, I as I said, the defense has really played a lot better than the score indicated. They haven't been helped out by turnovers or a real poor field position. Channing Wiles has this aspect of the game down now. This is becoming much easier for him. This is his shortest kick of the day. It's fielded by Pryor, and he's out to the 34-yard line, which is where Washington State will begin. Jay Barry's three touchdowns today have helped the Huskies build this victory. Today's Three. spread was uh, 45 points. The last time the Huskies scored 55 points was in 1982. They opened the season with a victory over the University of Texas El Paso, 55 nothing at Husky Stadium. There's a big time hit. Paxton Talele put a lick on Richie Swinton. And the Huskies giving viewers a, a textbook lesson in crisp tackling tonight. Again, you know, everyone talks about how great their athletes are, how much speed they have, but I'll tell you, when they get to the football, they tackle as well as any defense I've seen in a long time. And they've held a Cougars to net minus 54 rushing in this game. And now Mike Price is just saying, let's get it over, keep it on the ground. Swinton to the 49 of Washington. 
checking to see the last time the Washington State did not score a touchdown. Long time ago, I know that. Perhaps Colorado. And they're looking at that situation right now with three minutes to go. Well, they have run the ball on two straight plays, which is the first time tonight they've done that, Keith. That's somewhat of a concession, one would think. Well, you might look at it as a positive sign for the future. Second and seven for the 49. Swinton out of bounds at the 35 of Washington. Dana Hall drove him out of bounds. You know, we talk about the rushing offense. Two years ago, the Cougars had the best offensive team they ever had in their history. They had two 1,000-yard rushers in a one-back offense. You know, whether you are a great rushing team or not, you've got to run the ball, take the pressure off your offensive line, take some clock off, don't put your defense continually in the bad holes that this uh, passing-oriented offense has done so far this year. I'm keeping track now. That's three running plays in a row. Thank you. Two thirty-six to play, and the clock will tick now as they go to the air. Butch Williams out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Walter Bailey made the tackle. The clock is stopped as they move the chains. Last time the Cougars failed to score a touchdown was in 1986 when they fell to Arizona 31 to six. The game played here at Martin Stadium. Two field goals. Pair of John Trout upright splitters. This is Rich Swinton. He may go. Swinton, touchdown Washington State. It's a shame no one's here to see it. Well, the Huskies are going to win this football game today in total domination, but there's still a little bit of spirit in the Cougar hearts. Mike Price probably wishes that he had a 46-point extra point play. <laughs> well, 47, so he could get the lead. The power of but I'll tell you right thinking. now, if I were him and I could add a shot at a tie, I'd take it. Jason Hansen on for his extra point, and it is good. 55-10 our score with 2.21 to play in the final period. Rich Swinton with a 24-yard touchdown run. As I said, hopefully they uh, look at that last drive and say uh, maybe we should run the ball a little bit more often. Great job by Swinton, who was a 1,000-yard rusher two years ago. He just hasn't had a lot of chances this year to show his stuff. And this is his final game as a Cougar. And I'll tell you what, that touchdown run was not scored against a bunch of, you know, raw reserves either. There's some real good football players out there. There are a lot of teams in this conference that would like to have Washington's second team defense. Or third. Washington's next game will be on New Year's Day. They'll face either Iowa or Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. The Hawkeyes are a victory away from clinching the Big Ten Championship. They face uh, Minnesota next weekend. Well, I've seen nearly... You've seen nearly... I was going to say all the teams in the Big Ten, and I don't think there's anyone that can stand up to the Huskies. You never know on a one-game basis, but... Travel arranged through Continental Airlines, serving Seattle's business needs with convenient daily non-stops to Newark. Continental, the airline to New York. 
221 to play in the football game. Keith Chipman along with Ken Woody. We are pleased you have endured Apple Cup 90. It's been a long, long game, particularly if you're a Cougar fan. Husky fans can celebrate and relish a 9-2 and two regular season campaign. It's an opportunity to win a 10th game in the Rose Bowl against either Iowa or Ohio State on New Year's Day. Well, we can see the security people uh, stretching out to not sure they're going to protect the goalposts or make sure that a fight doesn't break out. You know, tempers have flared several times tonight. I'm sure maybe that touchdown uh, may have taken an edge off of some of the aggressive attitudes of any frustrated Cougar fans or players. First and ten from the 15-yard line. And Joe Holbert at quarterback. Mark DeGrasse carried the football for the Huskies. Ron Hawkins made the stop for the Cougars. That's the first time DeGrasse has carried the football this year for Washington, getting an opportunity to play. Clock running with a minute 50 to play. They're going to try to use up every second of that 25 second clock to get this thing over with. Eugene Harris, the ball carrier. Forward for a couple of yards. Seventh ranked Texas beat Texas Christian today. Big win for Florida. As Notre Dame is uh, out of the number one spot after falling today to Penn State. Virginia upset by Maryland. Eastern Washington, uh, easy prey for Houston today. Billy Joe Holbert on the corner. Down at the 27-yard line with 54 seconds left. Vince Saldivar made the tackle. Hobart is big and strong, and not many people going to take him down one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to take more than one player. Cougars struggling to get there. Huskies look content just to fourth down right now. Let the clock run down as long as possible. This will be the first time the Hobart's going to punt. First time the Huskies have had to punt in the second half. Hobart gets off a pretty good kick. He's the second unit punter. Cougars will let it roll to the 32-yard line. And there'll be one final snap, and Washington State season will end with a three and eight mark. And Washington will go to nine and two overall on its way to Pasadena on New Year's Day. Three and eight, this is the most uh, disappointing season record-wise for a Cougar football team since 1976 when they went three and eight overall, two and five in conference play. Cougars will equal that mark. Bledsoe with one final play in his freshman season. Rich Swinton still on his feet after the reception. It's fumbled. The 1990 regular season has come to an end as the Washington Huskies have defeated their cross-state rivals from Washington State by a final score of 55 to 10. Mike Price on his way out to congratulate Don James. And everyone extends their congratulations to the head coach of the Huskies. He's put together a fine football team. In 1990, Pacific 10 Conference champions, they'll represent the Pac-10 in the Rose Bowl. And we'll come back to wrap things up for Martin Stadium in Pullman. Following these messages, you're watching the Apple Cup 90.
When she was three years old, Adriana Savannah took a pair of scissors and stuck them in her eye. It took two surgeons, four exhausting hours of surgery, and more than $8,000 to undo the damage. At King County Medical, that's something we'd like you to think about. Because even though the cost of health care can be a little hard to take, according to people like Adriana Savannah, it certainly beats the alternative. Guess who got promoted to VP this morning? Archer. Archer? I thought they wanted somebody with an MBA. Yeah, well, he's got one. You're kidding. 18 months ago, he didn't. He got into this program at City University called Fast Track. Get your degree in half the time. Fast Track. Gotta run. City University, please. Fast Track at City University. Convenient night classes for professionals who know the value of time. A record-setting year at Mazda, the Miata, <laughs> the new Navajo. Thousands of new owners feeling just right. It's your turn now. You can save with factory-to-dealer incentives. Save with special options packages. Save up to $25.75. Mazda, there's no stopping us now. With deals like these, there's no stopping you. At your Puget Sound Mazda dealer now. Receive absolutely free your own piece of tangible wealth. A pure gold mini ingot. No obligation. Call now. Investor's Coin Vault. Next on the West, why is the government spending millions of your tax dollars to mothball these rusty ships? Also, we'll take you to a hospital that never issues a bill for its services. And a deadly new disease is blowing across the West on the next edition of The West. Sunday night at 6.30. Washington State falls to Washington by a final score of 55 to 10. And Ken Woody, there was some suggestion coming in that Washington State could play the game of the year, but they might not have any control over the outcome because Washington is just that good. Well, you know, the thing that I worried most about is that they would even care about competing, and at least they did that today. The defense played their hearts out. Offensively, I'm not sure they have the schemes or they missed Sean B. Wright Fair. I'm not sure they had the muscle ever in the beginning to give them much of a contest. This was a 3-3 football game after one quarter of play, and then the Huskies just decided they were going to make it their day. Well, the Huskies have got a great football team. You're taking nothing away from them. They are one of the best teams in the Pac-10 in a long, long time. No, they're the, one of the finest teams in the country this year without question and had they not slipped up last week against UCLA they could very well be playing for a national title in Pasadena because had they not lost a week ago they would have moved to number one without without question this week after Notre Dame got beat well I'm sure they'll have a lot of bad dreams about that Saturday uh, against UCLA and give UCLA a credit they played a great football game but I think mentally the Huskies just kind of lost their spunk when Greg Lewis got hurt and the guy the game got away from him the Pac-10 is a very difficult conference to have a national champion come out of you know Brian had a big day in the absence of Greg Lewis played very well we'll come back and talk more about that after we pause for these messages, please you joined us for Apple Cup 90.